Our tale begins with the Lady Diamina of House Lubar, the city-state of Uruk. Diamina was a skilled tactician, a cunning political operator, but she was neither skilled nor cunning enough to avoid the assassin's blade. An assassin, so it is said, who was sent by her husband. Why would Diamina's husband have her assassinated? Pick a rumor, any rumor. For her servants and household, this meant execution. For her bodyguard, say hi dwarf, and her personal tutor, Carl, this meant being sold into slavery. Some people it's just too profitable to, uh, to put to the sword. The same applies to her pet gladiators, wedding gifts from her husband, apparently. Pandran Lucan Ra and Bengal Bengal. But also sold into slavery the assassins, or should I say, the one who wielded the blade and the one who helped him. Matthias and Nyssa, Jade and Arnout. What better way to tie up loose ends? All now find themselves in the belly of a slave caravan and on their way to the city state of Tyr. Over on roll 20. That's what it looks like. An immense, lumbering, many-wheeled fortress of reinforced agafari wood, grinding its way across the sand, pulled by twin mechalots, the immense beasts of burden known for their great strength and stupidity. Deep in the belly of this monstrosity, you find yourselves and have been for a few days. Manacled at wrist, manacled around the neck with leather straps, all tied to the wall behind you with thick giant hair rope. And all around the incessant rumble and grind of the slave caravan as it folds its way through the desert. Your journey started out on a road, but <clears throat> for the last couple of days, you've heard the constant grind of sand beneath the Argosy's wheels. For some reason, the caravan has turned away from the road and headed into the deep desert. If anything, the temperature gets hotter. You're fed once a day on gruel and brackish water. And within this dark, windowless chamber, you suffer unending, sweltering heat. Portek, how beneath Athas's moons did you find yourself in this position? rendering service to a lady of a great house should have brought you respect and honor if not coin not this Constantine you know he's shackled next to you and of course the uh, the two gladiators Ra and Bengal Bengal As for the other two, whether you know Nyssa or not, the trader, unlikely. How much of Matthias's true face did you see the night he wielded the blade against your mistress? On this, you have yet to speak the truth. The long days wear on.
One afternoon, there come the sounds of sudden consternation. Voices raised on the outer walls of the Argosy. High-pitched cries of alarm. Shouts of concern. And in the nearby distance, you can hear the cry, or should I say war cries, of elves. And then, boom, a thunderous detonation that shakes the Argosy down to its foundations. The grinding of the wheels slows, becomes a low crunch against the sand, and then stops. You can hear people shouting and yelling, you can't stop an Argosy! Screams and yells, another explosion, you sent ozone in the air. The sounds of what must be arrows thwack, 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 into the side of the Argosy, above you and around you, running feet as guards race to defensive positions. It's not hard to guess what's going on. The slave caravan is under attack. <clears throat> in that immediate moment, is there anything that any of you in the slavehold would wish to do? Um, before that happens, uh, massive thank you to Pixie that's already come in with five dollars and says first first episode inspiration. So thank you the very way, much. this is our first, this is this this campaign's first one. So the way this works is we all have to roll a d20, including the DM, sadly. <coughs> so everyone roll. We have got a macro for this. We'll get it sent over. Uh, I alien. got a two. <laughs> you got a t oh, oh, God, yeah. I'm, I've rolled, in, I've rolled in game by accident, so I got a seven. 16. I forgot we were on real dice. I got a 10. I got a 16. So two 16s at the moment, yeah? Three sixteen. I got a 19. 19. I got a 19. A 19, okay. Well, yeah. you win it. So you... What, you, what do I win? Ah! So, so basically, you've got an inspiration dice. So any d20 you roll, you can save yeah. this, and you can only have one. Yeah? One at a time. Okay? So okay. you can save this for whenever you want, but say there's something that you really want to do, like make a save or make an attack, you can choose okay. to roll two d20s and take the highest. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. But you, but you have to announce that before you roll it. Okay. It's just like in Torg. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, don't speak that name here, all right? <laughs> We're playing Dark Sun. Yes, Torg. <laughs> we need to get a Torg campaign. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, thank you very much, Bixie. Okay, thank you very much. So carry on. Thank you. I will put that to good awesome use. Stuff. Yes, make a note. Don't forget about it. You have to use it this session. Okay, so while well, Bengal, Bengal looks around himself excitedly, um, <laughs> is there anything from the rest of you? you pay attention, people. Try this to break my bonds if I can. This might be our moment to break free from this. <sighs> giant hair rope is formed, well, as the name suggests, from the hair of giants tied together in thick braids. You would need to have the strength of a half giant to be able to break one of these things. Can I slip out of them? With escape you, bonds? Got, you have escape bonds, don't you? Yes. Is that a D100? A half giant, yeah, you say. Uh, and we have a half giant. You, you, a half <laughs> giant, you say? <laughs> you oh, roll, really? You roll that for me, Mark, didn't you? Matthias, 30%. Now go ahead and roll it. Uh, so, oh, God, I haven't rolled a D100 in a long time. Uh, 68, so that's a foul. Yeah, you twist work at your wrists, but the sweat has caused the uh, the giant's hair to swell and dig into your wrists. You only serve in reddening your hands further. Uh, Ra just would probably be sat there cross-legged, almost like hands on laps bound, just kind of smiling to herself, um, awaiting most likely like a go-ahead from someone. Um, and she <laughs> just kind of looks towards where she knows that Bungle, Bingle, yeah. Bangle? Bingle, <laughs> Bangle, man. Bingle yeah. bangle. <laughs> Where uh, just kind of looks towards smiling and just kind of awaits to yeah. see. Yeah, okay. So I, I sort of um, lean over and like tap uh, Ra, on the, Ra on the arm and I kind of twist myself back so that she can get at my uh, bonds um, so that she can break them and then 
hopefully I can like try and help her with whatever sort of items I find. Okay, so Maybe. to snap giant hair rope, you have to have a strength at least 21 and use your Ben Bars lift gates. Um, okay. In your case, Ra, uh, you can look it up. It's on the front page of your character sheet on the strength line and you'll yep. see that it's 80%. Yep, so do I roll a D100? Roll D100, yeah. <laughs> 80%, let's fail, let's go. Uh, 30%, so. All right, you, you just quite literally snap Bengal Bengal's uh, bonds loose with a simple twist of your hand. Cool. It's okay, so. So, yeah, is you've, been, you've, been in here, you've been in here for days and could have done that at any time. No one asked me to. <laughs> I'm, I'm content. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Is there anything sharp in the vicinity that I could perhaps use to cut other people's bonds or bras bonds are, or anything? Uh, there is not. There is not, unfortunately. Bomber. Um, After freeing Bengal, I would attempt to free myself if I'm able yeah. to with my own. Yeah. Roll again. You mean to say there's not a steel knife sitting there? Nice what? metal uh, blade 50. sitting there? 50. Yeah, you kind of pull yourself forward away from the wall, snap your neck and wrist uh, rest loose, which is the symbol flex of your titanic muscles. Um, at that moment, hearing the telltale noise of the bone fitting snap loose, the... Uh, the, the door to the, to the slave pen flies open and a pair of the caravan guards come rushing in. Well, seeing both Bengal Bengal and Ra loose, uh, they draw I, their I obsidian stick, short swords. I, I, I stick my leg out to make them trip over when they run in. <laughs> okay, roll me a d20, please. Uh, 16, again. A 16, 17, 18, that's actually enough. The first one who comes running in, that's a, a trip maneuver using the CMB rules. Your leg goes out. Um, his legs go out from underneath him, and he pitches forward onto the ground, loses grip on his obsidian sword, it goes clattering across the floor, and actually comes to a halt at your feet, Bengal Bengal. Okay, um, can I pick up the sword? Is it yeah. close enough? Well, then I do, and I stab him. <laughs> okay, go for Easy. it. Uh, D20, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a 19, again. Okay, no need to uh, to check if that's a hit. Uh, and you can roll me a d6, please, for damage. Yep. That's a four. Uh, okay, a four. And plus your strength makes it a five. Yeah. The fact that it's obsidian um, makes it less effect, however. Uh, only deals three damage. Nevertheless, that is enough to injure the poor fellow. Um, he rolls sideways as his own blade pierces him in the side. Uh, his companion shouts at you, back, get back, and thrusts a warning lunge from his blade straight toward you. Your nimble half feet sidestep, dodging the assault easily. Yeah, um, the, one, the, the, the guard who you stabbed pulls himself to his feet, staggers backward, holding his hand against the, the bleeding wound. We're under attack. Listen, defend the caravan and we will offer you freedom. Deal. Why should we trust you, first of all? Who cares? You were, the, you were the ones that put us in here in the first place. I have half a mind to stab you right now, so I never have to hear your little yappy voice. <laughs> you already did stab me. Yeah? Well, I'll aim higher. Hmm? His uh, companion grabs hold of him by the scruff of his, uh, of his tunic and pulls him back toward the door. <sighs> There's no time for this. We have to be at the blisters. And, oh. uh, my sword! Forget your sword! And the guard pulls the injured guard out of the room and you can see, hear them slam and ram a, uh, a locking pin in place. Um, here, feet running. You can hear the unmistakable, ululating war cries of elves. High-pitched, screaming, trilling noises. They sound like they're surrounding the entire caravan. It'll only be moments before they're pouring in here. Well, so are you going to free like us, or are you going to um, stand around gloating? Frost. Release them. Sorry. And, and, and she will, uh, hearing the sound of Nissa speaking, will head over there, kind of like I imagine it's quite cramped, the spaces, so she's kind of fumbling, really trying to tread lightly yeah, and not step on anyone. You, yeah. um, and we'll just kind of aim her hands out. Probably ends up touching your face by accident. That's fine. Like, That's fine. try to find your hands. I'll raise them so that, you know, you, you have access to them. She will just rip them apart or try to. 
go ahead and roll. It's highly unlikely that you'll fail at this. 20%? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll just assume that Ra goes, unless you don't want to leave anybody in. Uh, I, uh, I in will. Manacles. I will gladly Around the release room everyone one by one. Snap! 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 Just, I mean, it, it's frightening. Her fists are almost the size of your head. Close around the giant hair and bang, pull it loose from right in front of you. Well, you're handy to have around. Thank you. You are free, in the belly of the Argosy, with a single blade to your name. Hmm. I don't suppose you could do the same thing to that door. Oh, roll, me a d20, roll me a d20 for the door, right? Try. <laughs> a one? I forget if that's bad or good. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the only one you can fail on because your open door no! is plus 18. <laughs> Slams against the door. For a moment, it holds fast. Huh. Strong door. And then you can hear the uh, bolt. <laughs> being pulled loose, the door flies open, and standing in the doorway is an elven warrior. He's seven feet tall, limbs lean and muscled, desert brown, wearing a fairly ornate colored cape with a fan of feathers as a ruff around his shoulder, holding a long, slightly curved bone sword in his hand. I raise my hands. Odran, he says. <sighs> Come. On. And then turns and just runs back into the uh, into the depth of uh, depths of the Argosy. Do any of you speak Elven? Uh, yes, I do, I think. Okay. He, he just said a half elf and then jerked his thumb backwards and said now and then ran off. Okay. A few moments later, there is horrendous screaming comes from within the Argosy. The elves have clearly breached the outer perimeter and are making the caravan guards sell their lives dearly. Okay, I'm going to change the roll 20 picture to... I do know Elven. Yes. Cool. So this is a rough map of the interior of the Argosy. Um, you can see the, uh, the slave room at the back with all the little people drawn in. Ah. <laughs> Okay, um, the 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 rooms that are lettered A, B, C, D, and E are uh, well, obviously other rooms within the Argosy. You don't know what's in them. Um, yeah, as, <laughs> it's just yeah, wall to wall elf by now. Um, you come out of the door on the on the right hand side. Uh, you can see there's stairs off to your left up toward the firing deck. Um, half a dozen elves go charging through like <laughs> with their blades uh, kind of raised high. Uh, there's sound of bone blades striking skin screams and yells one of the guards headless bodies comes doo, 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 down the uh, down the stairs spraying hot blood into the shadows um after them two more elves you can see going in different directions holding a pot of oil in one hand and a flaming brand in the other it's fairly clear <laughs> what's coming next so what do you guys want to do flee fight um see if you can loot some of the contents of the Argosy before you go. I'd like to be able to grab a couple of swords. Smart idea. We need to find water. Water and weapons. Yes. I would have guessed where to live. Would weapons that we had be on this thing somewhere? Almost certainly not. Oh. That we could leave now. Confiscated or sold into market uh, back in the city-state of Uruk, where you were, where you were enslaved. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, you, 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 you have a... Before the flames really take hold, you have two or three minutes tops, you think. Um, so, or just let me know what it's going to be. Scour the rooms near us and see if there's any uh, water skins, uh, mm -hmm. sources of water, anything. Yeah. As a group, right. as a group then, toward room A, or are you splitting up? Splitting up. Yeah. Get as much uh, done as possible. Okay. Yeah. And avoid okay. Rod, any... do you want to stick together and we can go to which room? I suggest we do two groups of, uh, or three groups of two. Yeah. Yeah. I'd stay with Nissa. Yeah. Okay, so the sure. groups that you you kind of you. We know each other. Nissa and Matthias, Portek and Constantin, and yeah. uh, Men and Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and Bob. I kind of feel that you should have like a, a Borderlands style title card. Oh, don't worry, it's in the works. Min Max and underneath <laughs> yeah. it, we'll to our cafe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, who's going? Uh, which of you three is going into uh, into room A? What should I say? Which rooms are you going into? Um, well, let's I'll be having in, it. I'll I'll go into the f into room A. Okay, so uh, Nissa and Matthias, you together um, head to the well the, the the room next door, and it is revealed to be a, a large cargo hold. Oh, you good. can see hundreds of obsidian weapons. Bastard swords, short swords, daggers, battle axes. This is clearly what the uh, the caravan is is trading in. Uh, carrying half a dozen slaves is a bit of cream on top, but these people are selling weapons. Are there any bows? Kukris? Uh, uh, short swords count as kukris, so yep. yes. Bastard swords, short swords, daggers, battle axes. Hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Right. I'll grab a dagger. I'll grab a couple of short swords and... Any water in here? Some weapons for everyone else. Yeah, there, is there any, there any is spears? Not. You're not in there, Protek. Oh. <laughs> and quickly move to the next room if I don't see any water. Yeah. Okay, so just 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 so I know, just very quickly, what exactly you're taking? I'm just taking yeah. So myself, I'm taking two short swords for myself, and yeah. then I'm gonna take a handful of random weapons. So you can roll for whatever they are. I don't a handful know what, of random weapons. I don't know what people would be using. I'll, 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 sure, I'll, I'll help out and grab a uh, grab, uh, I know we've got a halfling, we've got a giant, so I'd probably take yeah. a big weapon for the I, giant. I use, like, singing sticks or something. I like, I like to roll, so we'll roll yeah. some random weapons. I wouldn't know what you go. use, so... I'll I have just... brought 1d6 armaments with me, my friends. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, Min and Max, uh, Ra and Bengal Bengal, where do you go? I'm um, following go? Bengal, so because I have no idea where I am. So. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> following the sound of his maracas. Yeah, I'm following him. Yeah, my maracas. Let's go to room B. Okay. Sounds like a good a good shout. Um, push the door open. Sleeping quarters. You can see twelve hammocks strung in the darkness. The chamber appears to be otherwise be empty. Okay. Fortek oh. and Constantine. Oh. Um. I would say go to uh, D. Okay. You scurry down the hallway around the corner. Uh, your instincts prove well placed. You're fairly certain that this is the quarters of the commander, a man you know only by name as Captain Weom. Uh, it has a proper agafari, a bunk with a mattress. Um, Small writing table and a uh, chair. Little more beside that visible. Um, uh, uh, quickly ransack the place. Okay. And any 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 valuables, any water, anything, any hidden caches. Hidden caches. Likewise, do, I'm searching. You, yeah, you looking under the bed. Actually, you see that one of the floorboards comes loose, and inside is a small, solid agafari wood box. Okay. Take it along. Okay. Uh, you pick it up, your hands burn. And just in the dim light, you see there's a sheen of some liquid has been smeared across the front of it. Could you roll me a saving throw against poison, please? I roll a four. A four. Okay. Fortunately for you, it is not a particularly strong poison, but it is enough to deal you five points of damage. Oh. You almost drop the box in pain. Uh, perhaps grab a blanket off the bed to wrap exactly. it up in. Yeah. 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 And then go hurrying out. Okay. Uh, around Stan you, will you, actually you, grab some stuff too. He's going to grab sheets and any kind of cloths um, yeah. if we're going into the desert. I, I want Good some cover. Idea. Good. Okay. So bed clothes and, uh, and similar look covers. Uh, the elves, you can hear them around uh, the Argosy as you kind of put your head out, the, out of the rooms. Uh, you can see several of them now dragging prisoners out into the sun. Anyone who resists is put to the sword immediately on the spot. Uh, they notice you at the corner of their eyes, but recognizing you as slaves, they don't seem to be particularly bothered by your presence here. Uh, you can see one of them, one or two of them warily watch you as you pass, but uh, they're not interfering with you. Uh, the sound of smoke comes to your nostrils. Are you continuing to search or are you leaving? Um, we, 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 we will, uh, in this room, you mean? I mean, no, in the Argosy as a whole. 
Yeah, one more, uh, one more room. There's got to be some kind of food store or or some yeah. Russian area Look for water so, and yeah. food. Water, yeah. water, water. That's my only goal. Yeah. <laughs> and gold okay. smoke. All right. Um, well, you find it in the chamber labeled E, the kitchen. You can see big tubs of the gruel you've been being fed, an enormous barrel uh, that contains two tons of water, uh, five hundred gallons. And there are on shelves on the side, 20 vessels, each a, uh, about a one quart in size. So that's a quarter gallon. You yeah. reckon you could probably carry uh, two per hand if you wanted. Any wine so, skin or any like skins that we could fill? No, no skins. Just these little kind of bloody ceramic pots on tiny little ropes. Well, shit, that'll have to do. Uh, <laughs> I'll fill them up as many as I can. Okay. All right, so you, you're each going to fill four? Yep, and I drown okay. myself in it now to make sure I'm hydrated. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Drink as much water as I can. Okay, well, you've already. If Portek okay. and I are in there, then I'm going to fill as many as I can and use one of the sheets I use to carry as many, kind of like a sack. Okay, nice. So there are 20, right? So you're going to take all 20 with you. Oh my God, yes. And everybody drink <laughs> your fill now. Drink Absolutely. Your fill yeah. now. Yeah, yeah right. get, this, uh, get this done, you man. If yeah, there's like okay. a barrel, I'm carrying the big barrel. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's two tons. I put it in my pocket. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, so there. drink your drink your fill now, and then take and then fill up fill up the twenty. Yeah, yeah. Is that what I understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So twenty quarts you're carrying. And I'm gonna watch right. the half giant so pick up the two ton thing. <laughs> Yeah, no, that thing weighs uh, uh, forty thousand uh, pounds. So that's not happening. It's a lead done. <laughs> okay, um, so you rapidly drink your fills. Smoke now starts to sift in at head height and begin to sink down toward the floors. And you okay. spend your final uh, few moments filling up the uh, uh, the containers, putting the stoppers in, bundling them into into sacks, uh, makeshift over your back. And head out of the Argosy. Well, one last thing. I'm just yep. gonna grab a couple of spoonfuls of gruel as well. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> hey, it's <Yep>. food, man. <laughs> okay. You emerge out into the desert and uh, see exactly how many elves we're talking about here. Wow. I love the old art. Oh dear. <laughs> Backs of art. That yeah. is a lot. What they surround the, the Argosy in a... Um, this picture doesn't actually show it properly, uh, but the, uh, the strut that connects the Mechalots to the Argosy is broken. And it looks as if the, uh, the, the wood has either been scorched or blown apart. The ends of the, the two ends of it are, are blackened, and there are splinters of, of agafari wood all over the sand. And in fact, the sand underneath has become a puddle of glass. Interesting. You come stumbling out onto the sand. Looking back over your shoulders, you can see the flames are now licking around the outside of the Argosy, burning hot, sending great plumes of black smoke shimmering into the desert sky. The elves have gathered together a small group of caravan staff. You recognize Captain Weon. Standing before him is a tall, regal-looking elf with a long metal blade at his side, a lengthy dagger. And he turns and makes some loud proclamations in Elven. Those of you who speak Elven understand the words to mean the Juridai are not slaves. So suffer all those who would see them in bondage. And then he turns his eyes on the caravan staff and takes hold of Captain Weom by his hair and in halting common repeats his proclamation 
The Jordadai are not slaves. Tell your king to set our people free. And then he draws his blade across Weom's throat. Weom spills his water on the sand from top and from bottom and dies gargling as the elven chieftain cast his body aside. Seeing you guys having come stumbled out, a young elf warrior who's got a high bridged nose and really piercing green eyes. Better go, he says. Take your luck in the desert. You find nothing here. Which way to tear? I don't know. We'll Ask the winds. Do I see anything which, uh, are like, are there any tanks around? No, the elves do not ride. No. Do they have any Can material you... materials or, uh, made of kank, kank chitin or anything? Uh, yeah, the, uh, there's there's armor, there's shields, there's weaponry made of chitin, all among them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any of the guys that were killed just now, the guards, did they have some kank chitin on them? Uh, the guards actually were wearing primarily leather armor. Leather armor. Yeah, but um, some of them would have had, I don't know, belt buckles or... Uh, that's, that's enough. I need just a little blades. bit. Yeah. Okay. Any, any loose bows lying around? Several of the guards are being driven away into the desert. Those who are resisting are being put to the sword. And seeing what is happening at this point, they scatter. And the high-pitched, trilling cries of the elves mock them in their flight. I think we should make ourselves scarce. Yes. Uh, not stay around. Uh, we can come back later to see whatever is left here. Do any yeah, aren't, out, out, aren't, out, aren't out among the milling uh, throngs of elves, it's very difficult for you to see if any of the guards uh, who've been felled were carrying any bows. You would need to stick around and let things die down a little bit first to do that. I don't mind doing that if there's no danger to us, but if they're, if they're sort of telling us to bugger off, then I'm... <laughs> At the moment, the, uh, the elves, uh, the, yeah, with you guys being slaves, aren't paying any close attention to you, but it's clear that their, uh, their emotions are running high. You can see several of them are dragging already burning chunks of the Argosy away and seem to be forming a bonfire with it. Okay. Um, all right, well, I'll stick with our, with our group then. We just have to take our chances. Yeah. I, I just uh, Actually, just rip, rip some uh, chitin, chitin, uh, kang chitin items uh, away from the, the, the cor corpses, yes. and that's it. Yeah. Understood. Um, if there that are... leather armor pulls free, I'm gonna. Grab what I will armor. do. Several yeah. of the arrows. Were... You grab a piece of leather armor. There are several arrows that were shot at, at, at the Argosy frame itself, right? Yes. Can I pluck a few of those loose? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'll, I'll Let's take, say, um... take five. Uh, I roll seven for you because I'm okay, kind. Nice. nice. Thank you. Uh, okay, and we've got leather armor there given to Constantine. That puts your armor class up to 15. They'll find your corpse somewhere in the desert clutching seven arrows. <laughs> because he's a kind and generous DM. Yes. Yep. Okay. Away from the Argosy, then, you stumble, hurrying over the sand. And uh, just I to give you an idea, this is the kind of terrain that you're in. Bloody hell. Awesome, this is where I thrive. Is this, yeah. is this um, your own photograph? Yes, that's the Arkadis. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, didn't I, did I take that? Uh, one of us took it, yeah. I took it. I <laughs> took beautiful. that photograph. Wow, that's actually a photo. From, yeah, yeah. I the, oh, nice. I've, I've added dark sun sky, but that's oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that's where it's. I was gonna say, I was yeah. like, that's what your sky looks like. No, <laughs> yes, not all the time. Sometimes. How are you alive? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. All uh, right. Oh, hey, uh, Grundy. Hi, Grundy. So, How are you, man? Hey. He's checking Twitch. I, uh, okay. I picked up a handful of weapons. I don't know what you guys use, and I'll just drop them on the floor. Yeah, I'll drop the ones that I picked up as well. Okay. Whatever they are, I don't know. What was dropped on the floor randomly? Yeah, I like I like kneel down and just start feeling start things. Feeling. <laughs> oh, I, I picked up a large weapon. I know I said I picked up a large weapon and some small weapons. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, so let's say um, you picked up three daggers and a bastard sword. Yeah, sounds good, yeah. Yep. And uh, we'll say for Nissa, uh, two daggers, a short sword, and a battle axe. Okay, sounds good. I'll keep one of the daggers, but other than that, yeah, I'll say I've kept two short swords. I said, I don't know uh, what you Stan, I'll grab that short sword. That short sword. Uh, I'm gonna grab that. Okay. Okay. I will. I will um, grab the, the the daggers and see whether I can make them in, in, into uh, a spear somehow later on. No, you'd, you'd, yeah, you'd need a stick for that. But uh... yeah, I'm gonna hand Ra the bastard sword. I'm like, here, this is yours. <laughs> is that safe? <laughs> It's a big sword. It'll be fine. In a blind Wait, what do giant. I have? Do I just have a short sword then? I, I can use my fists if worst case scenario and she offers it back, probably no, very no, dangerously no, no. offers it back with like no, the point I'm like ducking it. behind it like, no, it's fine. You it's hear fine. gurgling as Matthias dies on the, on the sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Galba Gal, you could use two short swords at the same time with uh, without any penalties. Although you're specialized in singing sticks, you have the ability to fight with two weapons. As gladiators, you can pick up any weapon and use it with great skill. Well, you know. Yeah, okay, so I'll have... Are there two short swords left? There's a... Yes. Um... Let, me, let, me just, let me just run down real quick. Um, there was one. I took it. Mm. Oh, one short sword. But you could take a, a dagger. There was a whole bunch of daggers. And a dagger, yeah. yeah. Take two daggers and fight with two um... daggers. Okay. I can stabby on people. I've got the no, two one, weapon two. stuff as well, Mark, haven't I? So is that is my yeah. rolls are equal, aren't they? So it's I've got yes. plus four, plus four to hit with a cookery. That's with uh, obsidian minus two already. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you've got the obsid you've got the stats for an obsidian weapon already in there. Yes, and I'm specialized. So yeah. So I can use yeah. so both of them are plus four, plus four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Stan will also pick up an extra dagger. Uh, based on what you said, he's going to pick up one and he'll take two. And walk right. over to Ra and go <clears throat> and like nudge. And if she looks in his direction, say to throw, should things get too bad, you'll need these. To throw Tim. What? I'm going to be honest with you, sir. I don't know if you've noticed, but my lady friend here has no eyes. But she's we much will more be capable than you think. Okay. You don't know what I know about her. So don't you stand up there, looking down at me, telling me what you know and what you think you know. I need to look down I at you. I will rip people, your face people, off. People. And he did not look down at all while speaking to you. He's going to say, I'm sure that's Friends. nice. She's more capable than you think. And he's just going to walk away. I thought she was talking to I me. I Bengal. My friends, we can argue here or we can die here. Exactly. So let's move. Which one of you knows how to navigate the desert? Me. Wait, I do. <laughs> I'm no, kidding. Or no, um, I, I, looking over your stats, nobody has survival sandy wastes or navigation. No. I no. have navigation, though. You have navigation. I okay. have survival jungle. How, can I, have I make that an next level? That helps. How long we were traveling away from Uruk, and based on my knowledge of the trade routes and how long it took me to go there, how long it would take to get back to either Uruk or Tyr. Or any trade posts in between. Okay, um, you are by Argosy about four or five days south of Uruk. Okay, going back to Uruk uh, would be extremely risky, given that all of you have been branded as slaves. Yes, yeah. you actually all have a small brand on your shoulder here, so that would be inviting a return to slavery. Um, Tyr from here is a week or two away by foot. Uh, you're not exactly sure where you are. The, there is also Silver Spring, which is a, 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 a trade stopover, but on between uh, between Uruk and Tyr. Mm -hmm. But the elves who control Silver Spring don't let anybody in who doesn't pay the toll. And you have to can't afford. Which no. you can't what? afford. Uh, unless Captain Weom had, you know, five hundred silver pieces in his box. But 
Ah, right. We haven't looked at that yet. Um, um, can I just very quickly get a note on the weapons that you took? Uh, Bengal, you took the short sword. Uh, Constantine. Uh, did I? I thought Constant uh, Constantine took took one. Took yeah, Constantine sword. has the short sword and, and a dagger. And I have, I have two daggers. Two daggers, sorry. Okay. But I you, have a you, bastard sword and a dagger, I believe. Yeah. Portak has two daggers. Leia, you picked up a short sword already, though, haven't you? So, did you oh yeah, put... I have an obsidian one. Yeah, did you yeah. put that back? Yeah. Or... No. So that's an extra right. short sword we've got. I took two short swords. Just a minute, please. Constantine, uh, obsidian short sword. Matthias. Uh, two short swords. Yeah, I've got your stats for that already. Um, Nissa, you took... Seven arrows and... Um... One dagger. A dagger. Yeah. Obsidian. And Portek, you took uh, two obsidian daggers, right? Yes. Okay. And Ra took the bastard sword. Is it, what's, what's left? Do we know? No, that was all of it, I think. There was a battle axe as well, wasn't there? But that was a battle axe, yes, that's right. Okay, cool. Right. Um... <laughs> the module very kindly says to make sure that the players have a good look at this. I remember that image. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, show it to them again. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Real hot. This is, this is how you die. Roastingly hot. There are two things you notice about the desert immediately. The first is the silence. There is no sound. The wind does not whistle over the dunes. There is a faint whisper here and there where you may catch a, a sand fall. There is a hiss as your feet trudge through the dune slopes, the laboring of your own breath. But beyond that, it is completely silent. There is no life here to make noise, no trees through which the wind can blow. The second, of course, is the heat a furnace heat. If you've ever stood in front of an open oven while you're baking a cake, that's what comes out. Except it's all around you, like a blanket pressing in from every side. You turn your head to maybe catch a breeze, the breeze is just as hot. You are breathing in a slow fire with every inhalation. The sun, crimson as it rises into the olive sky, grows paler as it reaches its zenith. You have enough, so you have taken enough water for the day. Out of your 20 quarts, that is divided by four. That's five gallons. Ra will drink four of those in one day. Unless we find more. So you have enough to stop yourselves from completely dehydrating, but as you share your water out, if you share out enough for each of you to have some, it will only stave off the inevitable. And then there is the heat. Today, the temperature is only warm, pushing 100 degrees. That's actually very mild. Yeah, that's quite mild. Oh, you're talking s s Fahrenheit. I thought you meant Celsius. Oh, I was yeah, like, I, oh, I no. I thought it was Celsius. That would, I was it like, be boiling. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I was like, you're like, oh, that's mild. I'm like, hold up on a minute. <laughs> hold on a moment. <laughs> so that's that's 40 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's very cool, actually. What? 40, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's like our, our, our beginning of summer. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Jesus. We're lucky it's so tame today. Yes. I, uh, you are likely to suffer heat stroke from this, but as if I, the temperature rises any further, you will. Can I do a heat protection roll and a water find roll? Okay, heat protection isn't quite necessary at, at warm yet. Oh, okay. uh, water find you can do. Um, yeah. That will find you the water you need for the day, but it slows yeah. your travel rate to a half. Okay. okay. I think it might be important that mm. we try and find water. Does I anybody else well. has to have the skills to find water as well? I mean, I have. Nissa has. I can find some water. Who has water? Yeah, I, I have it as well. I have water find. I thought I took it. Hey, 
Matthias doesn't. And Ra doesn't. Ra? Everyone else does. Ra doesn't. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a problem. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to people bringing water to me. Sorry. Yeah, that's kind of my, uh, my if gig. If we can find a, bit, a large enough water source, then we should be able to, uh, to help. Uh, uh. You can drink the water that we carry with us, and the rest of us will find the water for ourselves. Thank you. Sorry. I... Sorry. I don't apologize. There is safety in numbers, big. okay? Mm. So what happened back there? Elves destroyed the Argosy and killed the, the, the caravan master and, and most of the guards. Oh, that's those that, nice. Those that resisted were killed. Those that didn't were sent off into the desert. Oh, Nothing that's... But their, but their birthday suit. That's good, though, right? Yes, we're free. Yeah. In a it's good that we're speaking. free, I suppose, yes. Um, let's let's try and find a getting... shady spot if we can. Make a shady spot. I and wait until the, 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 the darkness falls and we go back. Yeah, we, let's travel by night. We do not travel back to Uruk. We will be, we will be sold back into slavery within yeah. seconds. We need to go to Silver Spring or find another another Argosy or another trader, anyone. Stick um, to the road and travel by night. Let, let us wait till the night falls and I'll try and see whether I can uh, identify where we are a bit better. Uh, between my cosmology uh, knowledge and my navigation skills, I might have a pretty good idea where we, we, we are. Um, While they're discussing this, I'm going to be using that extra sheets that I found to set up a cover from the sun for us. Like a burn loose, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, do, are we making... Like a, to camp in spot, like a tent? Uh, very rude, very crude tent. <laughs> using okay. items like, you know, that we picked up, using my weapons to kind of dig into yeah. the sand. No, that's fair enough, yeah. A battle axe. You, can get yourself, you can get yourself down in the lee of a dune. Like a makeshift lean-to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can all just stand in the shade of the half giant. <laughs> <laughs> well, whose shade is she going to stand in, huh? That's why that's, so that's there. there. If she lays down yeah. next to it, it should cover yeah. the shade. The, 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 the shade of the halfling's ego. <laughs> you lie down here. I lie down? Yeah. <laughs> you and your big head, you can't afford to get a suntan. No, it's just yeah. not very nice. I know that. Stan will just go under the uh, the shade as well and just sit down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hopefully then uh, wait out the day. Yeah, and... Um, under these circumstances. Mark, the, the Argosy was presumably traveling on a flat bit of ground, a, a, a trade route? It was, no, it had left the trade route. Um, it was winding its way between the dunes, headed in some unknown direction. You're not quite sure why it would have done that. But given the, the the geography of the landscape, what would be the most logical path the Argosy would have had to follow to get somewhere? It would have to find. It would have to do a, a, a snaking path between the dunes. But right. what its actual destination was, it looks like it was heading into the alluvial sand wastes, into the desert wastes. If yeah, seems odd. It's very odd. Is there? A any way we can get a bit of high ground, like one of the dune sure. peaks, and just see if there's anything in, in the distance that we can see at all? <sighs> From this position, struggle, you're struggling your way to the top of a nearby dune. Perhaps 10 miles to the west, there are some, there, there looks to be uh, some rocky outcrops. But that's it. And in every other direction, it's just... Every other direction... See is an ocean of sand. Jesus. Yes. You can see where the Argosy is burning and it make, uh, make out the long line of elves winding their way across the dunes at an incredible rate now, likewise heading west, almost directly west from it. The, the Argosy was run. heading south? The Argosy appears to have been heading southwest. The elves are heading west away from it, running over the dunes, kicking up plumes of sand behind them, faster than a cank just fleet desert runners. Hmm. If, how far did we move away from the Argosy? You've come maybe a mile or so away from the Argosy. 
perhaps it might be prudent to go back and see if yes. there's anything that we can scavenge from the from the remnants of the Argus. I would agree. That would, that would yeah, help definitely. us. Okay. Now that they um, picked, it, picked it over. Portek, don't forget that you liberated something from Weon's Exactly. Cabin. That's the other thing that... Uh, um, <clears throat> Okay, I've, we found this flat box in the captain's quarters. Um, it's what made of like it? a fire, but it's, it has a po poison coating, which I oh. happen to... Uh, can I can I identify it? Yeah, I could have a look as well. Yeah, have a look. It's, we wrapped it in cloth here. I don't touch it. Yep. I, I want to see if I can recognize it from... Just yeah, give me a herbalism on. check. Roll me d d20, please. A six... Oh, well, your herbalism, is, herbalism score is 20. <laughs> you pick up the unmistakable scent of red leaf cactus. It's probably red leaf sap. It's a, it's, it's a fairly weak poison, but it's enough to discourage somebody from, uh, from prying too closely. Do I know if there's any way to remove it without being poisoned? <sighs> you could perhaps fashion uh, some makeshift covers from your hands using uh, the corner of a sheet. That would probably allow you to get the... Uh, Get the box open. Okay. Um, I will do so. And I will try and... Um, let's see. One second. It, is it locked? It is not locked, no. What I will do is I'll open it away from me. If that makes any sense. Okay. In case well, something springy um, yes. comes out. And away from us as, as, as well, I hope, right? <laughs> yes, no, right in your face. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Inside, the crimson sun shines like blood on a scattering of silver coins nice. and a bone tube. Okay. Well, I... Um... I guess this could help us if we need to bribe our way into Silver Spring. Is it enough mm -hmm. to bribe our way into Silver Spring? Not for everybody. Not sure. um, Perhaps not for everybody. Can I appraise it? The well, the the silver pieces are worth uh, twenty five silver pieces because there are twenty five of them. Um, the bone tube you think is probably quite worthless, uh, except you think it has something inside. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a look. There is a rolled up piece of paper, which when you unfold it, you see as a map. Ah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Perhaps we should have started with that. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if only we had some way to find out where we are. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps, okay. it's in, perhaps it's in so, this poison-coated box. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's in his map then? <laughs> Moving on so, very okay, quickly. <laughs> let's 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 have a look at this map then. Yeah, it's on World Twenty now, or it should be. What what? Where are we? I have an inkling that it's down that little dotted trail, in the length of alluvial sandways. There, yeah. Uh, yes. Ah, yes. yes. Is it cheating if I know what the rest of the map looks like? Because no. I've seen it in your study. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. If we head directly west, and it does the, it changes into that sort of spotted landscape. Is that is that a different kind of terrain? Yeah, that's um, those are stony barrens leading up into rocky badlands. They're effectively the foothills of the Ringing Mountains. Right. Is that a little easier to navigate, perhaps? Um, the Rocky Band lads won't be. The Stony Barrens might be a touch easier to navigate. Um... Cled has an oasis, by the look of things. Have I been to Cled before? Mm. Uh, as part uh, of my I, I live in Cled. That's oh. my hometown, or at least my hometown. This is where I live now. My hometown is South Lidopolis, but I've been living for the last 20 years. Well, if years we want to head Cled. to my... my hometown is Tyr, so perhaps we can head towards Cled and on the way well, from there go to Tyr? In Cled we can properly prepare for a, a proper for journey. A journey, yes. Yeah. And perhaps if we, we, if we make it to Cled, yeah. 
if we get a... I'm just trying to facilitate our survival. Mm -hmm. Silver Spring is closer, but we have to travel further through the sandy wastes. And that itself may be more dangerous. The deeper into the sandy wastes you go, usually the bigger the, the creatures that you'll find. So, where are we on the map at the moment? On along here. I'm going to hazard a guess that we're at the end of this X here. Right. Okay. There. Yeah. I have. I have a clue. So then, the Silver Spring is actually close. So. Yes, but it, they 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 they, but they, charge, weren't... they charge entrance. And their elves. Have. And it's through a, a bigger part of terrain that uh, mm. um, is even more inhospit hospitable than the Stony mm -hmm. Barrens. If we can make it to those Stony Barrens directly west, that might be easier navigating and might speed us up a bit. Maybe it will. It will still not be a a, a, a walk in the park. But no, but the, the, it'll be solid ground as opposed to loose sand. That might yes. be easier to walk on. Yeah. And, both have difficulties. Difference between Just Stony Barrens and it's a it's a little uh, it's a little better. It's not much. It's a little better. Yeah. Well, a little better, little better in this case is 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 better than not better. Better than none. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, at present, uh, your best, assuming Ra carries Bengal Bengal, um, your fastest speed is Portek. Because he is a dwarf, he moves slower than the rest of you. Mm -hmm. Right? No. 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 Wasn't it? No, movement, I... movement rate nine. Um. I had an increased movement, didn't I? Did you take that? Yes, I did. Let me have a look. That would be very cool if you had that. Mm hmm. He's a fast dwarf. Yes. Yes. Yes, I, I did. Do. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So uh, that then gives you a in the sandy wastes a movement rate of about eight miles per day. Um, in the uh, in the stony barrens, that goes up to twelve. Uh, and then we have to divide those rates by two if we're looking for water along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Needed on out. But we're, we have enough water for a day. Sort you of. have enough water for a. Uh, uh, currently, have enough water for a day. Uh, you will suffer some dehydration because you don't have enough to give everybody uh, their, their, their required amount. Uh, Mark, I sent you a, a question uh, in uh, what's this? Um, oh, the Zoom chat. In the Zoom about chat, fine water. Sorry. Okay, let me. Um... Only, uh, only enough for yourself. Okay. It can't, okay. It can't be split. So, I didn't mean splitting it. I mean, if I was finding it for someone else, would it match their amount or would it match mine? Because it says I can't uh, split it, but it doesn't it say I yours. can't find it. it would okay, yours. and uh, yeah. I, I, we have to add, of course, that we also drank enough water for today. So today doesn't count. Today, yeah, today is fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right, so why don't we head for the Stony Barrens? That'll increase our movement. Um, that's less than a day's journey. We we first uh, we yeah we, we first I suppose scavenge the the the, the Argo Sea rem yes, remnants. Yes, absolutely. Right? Okay, let's do that first. Okay. Actually. Who knows? We might find more water. Yeah. I'm not suggesting we will, but you never know. Yeah. All right. Uh, you head back over the dunes, a course of a a mile or so, back to the Argo Sea. It's a smoldering wreck. Collapsed in upon itself. Both the Mechalots have gone. You can see they've just wandered off into the desert, leaving plow like trails with the sand behind them. You cautiously approach the reeking mass. You can hear the crack and hiss of uh, still burning timbers. Smoke hangs low across the bodies of the fallen. And as you draw near, beginning to look and scout around for salvage. Half a dozen figures step out into view from behind the rear end of the Argosy. Caravan guards. Their eyes go toward you 
and then toward the sacks that you have over your shoulders. So that's where it went. The leader of the guards, a broad-shouldered woman called Rog, Put the water down, she says. Go about your business. And nothing untoward will happen. And put all your weapons down and all your equipment, and we will let you live. How many of them are there? There are six of them. I don't think you understand the situation here. And she gives a whistle. And you hear footsteps and sand behind you. There's another six coming to you from the other side. I think you're we have, missing. We have, we have you outnumbered. Ron? Show yourself we a little bit ha- better. <laughs> she we does like have a, a half giant. <laughs> she just does her like gladiator pose of like the, <laughs> like, the big like, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Show him the guns. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the gun show. She goes. She goes from being quite like almost making herself look smaller, quite meek and like big smile, to like gladiator mode, which is just very big. Like it's like showtime. like every muscles, every muscle in her body just starts flexing. <laughs> she yes. just like <laughs> do you do you roar at them? Do the roar. <laughs> <laughs> Over uh, behind Rog's shoulders, you can see a couple of the other guards actually take a step back. Kind of looking at each other, Rod right, catches out of the corner of her eyes. She realizes that her leadership is in the balance. Huh. And uh, oh. let's play a game then, shall we? But before we do, Mark, because I know we're rolling for initiative. I'm a roll um, for reaction. I roll for reactions for us, <laughs> but actually, it turns out you are going to roll for initiative. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, a massive thank you to Roll for Z, who's donated ten dollars and says, "Don't die." So that's a healing potion, Mark. So you bastard! Yay! Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with these oh, healing gosh. potions, Mark, you can uh, if there's I, mean, I think you said there's only one strength anyway. Uh, there's two strengths. There's two so strengths, so yeah, you strength, can roll healing, with extra healing. And then I um, rather suspect one of the guards will have one. So um, mm, it's, um, um, I wonder. That is a player. There, yeah. Probably. So there you go. Yeah. So that's for that. But there you go. So thank you very much, Rolf for Z. Uh, much appreciated. So yeah, awesome. Thanks, man. Outstanding. They're going to need it. Let's let's make them let's hey. make them work for that. Okay. Um, so, Rog lowers her hands to her obsidian blade. I still fancy our odds. Bring it on, bitch. Oh, ah! okay. <laughs> Translation. Talk shit. Let's go. Roll for initiative, please. Okay. So if uh, if you guys don't remember, this is how it goes. You roll d10. And add the speed factor of whatever it is you're doing. Okay? Mm. That'll be a, there'll be a weapon speed factor or a spell casting time. And if you let me know what that is, make the roll, add, the, uh, add it up, and I will run down the list and, uh, and get it all from you right now. It's, uh, I do not have the stats for a bastard sword. Should I use uh, my what I've got for my lull? lull the Latouris? No. Latouris? The bastard sword speed factor is... Let me just get that for you right now. Uh, while you're doing uh, that, can no. we can we not change the D10 to something else? Because my D10's never been used and it's quite sharp. <laughs> my no. hands, my hands are soft. <laughs> okay. What? what? <laughs> my poor soft hands. I've not used if the you're D10. Using, if, are you, if you're using we it two handed, we all died a little inside. If you're using it two handed, uh, Panda, it's eight. Uh, all right, I'll use it two handed. And one. you've got swift smash, haven't you? So that goes down to that goes down to five. So actually, it is the same as your Latulis. I was lying. Okay. Shall I just use my Latulis as like the kind of thing for for now? Uh, Yeah, just use that. (laughs) Before you start, Mark, Rolf Aziz just come in with another ten dollars. He says because the the, because the DM looks suspicious. (laughs) 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 That's two healing potions. Yeah, thank you very much, Rolf Aziz. Outstanding, very cool. Yeah, roll for initiative. Yeah, yeah, roll, guys. Uh, what's the, the speed factor of a short sword? Uh, I mean, daggers, two daggers. What's the... Daggers are two, Just asked in chat as well. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, speed factor for a short sword is three, three. I believe. Yeah. And daggers is going to be a two. Okay, cool. I, mean, I remember six, that. Right? 
You roll nice, a, a d10. d10. Yeah. And add that number. You want to get nice and low. Okay, okay are, we ready? are we ready to go? Bengal? Yeah. Wait, What'd which one is there? But there are two that look the same. There are two <laughs> I don't, which one's the so, d10 again? It's this one with the two digits on it, right? The d10 that's is the that, one that has one digit. But that there's, that's fine. No, the, 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 the d10's the one that's got ten digits work. on. They both they both work. Yeah, it's got ten okay, digits equal on. Equal amount of sides. Uh, what's a zero? That's ten. That's, that's a ten. Cool. That's I got bad. the ten. Okay, and add your speed factor to that. Uh, daggers. Do I have to two? If so I'm, twelve. If I'm using two, 12. is that four no. or is it just two? No, it's just this. They go off at the same time. So. I'm yeah. having a dumb moment. I'm sorry. Constant. That's fine. That's all right. You've not used this system in a long time. Constant. No. Um, three plus my three, so mine's a six. This is a six. Okay, Matthias. Uh, six plus one, seven. Okay, Nissa. Six plus zero, six. Portek. Uh, three plus four is seven. And Ra. Four plus five, nine. Nine, okay. Two and plus two is five. No, it is. Be dead NPCs uh, on A6. Okay, so that all kicks off at pretty much the same time, uh, but we'll go um, Constantin and Matthias first. Uh, in fact, probably Matthias, because he's got the high decks. Wow. So uh, let's be having it, Lee. I... We'll move in with music. everyone else and Not slash <laughs> slash twice. Uh, okay, so there are there, there's two groups of six, one but one in front of you, one behind, and Rog is the the, the guard leader is in the is in the group in front. Uh, I'm gonna go straight for her. I'm gonna just okay. literally charge straight at her. Force a morale check, nice force, force morale check, yeah. Uh, so I'm plus four to hit on both. Oh my god, I rolled. <laughs> A six and a twelve. That <laughs> probably misses. Okay, yeah. Uh, the guards are only armor class twelve. Oh, I hit one then. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Good damage though. Five plus four, nine. Holy crap! Okay, um, your blade slices clear through her leather armor. She staggers backward, holding her hand. You can see I get bright purple and yellow yellow innards spilling out between her uh, her, her fingers. Um, it's almost a mortal injury from your first strike. I, I get three and two. Does that mean I get my third now? No, that comes the next round. Next oh, is round. this your off? Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. One then two then one then two then one then yep. two. Yeah. Okay. Um, at the same time as that happens. Uh, Constantine. Uh, Constantine's gonna, he's actually gonna pull out both weapons, spin behind Ra, since there's two groups. Yep. And, uh, he's gonna take a defensive stance and say, let them come to us. Okay, nice. And I'll be, and if any come near me, I'll be using death parry. Shit. <laughs> okay, so you get into position to, uh, set yourself up for a parry. Okay, Nissa. All right, um, I am going to uh, target the leader. Yep. And I am going to focus my will and project force on her. Okay. Strike her with the power of your mind. Indeed. Okay, give me a power check, please. 13 plus 4 is 17. That's a success. Success. That's a success. Okay, and uh, There's no roll damage. Touch. There's no attack roll needed, so... No. Deduct three. the PSPs and yeah. three damage. Okay. Uh, um, she drops as a blast of psychokinetic force hits her smack in the bridge of her nose. It cracks, driving shards of bone into her brain. Rog falls. They lead her down. The guards are forced to make a morale check. <laughs> 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 yeah, and um, the five surviving ones who were standing near her, one of them shouts, this wasn't supposed to be easy, easy, Rog. He shouts at her dead body and uh, holds his hand up towards you and turns, and with his companions, they flee back around the back of the Argosy, and you can see them running over a nearby dune. Oh, one of them's looking back over his shoulder. They're not chasing us! Do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, you don't know because you were is close there, with is, her. Is there any of them who's have, uh, who's got a shield on him? Uh, and a spear, maybe. Sp uh, yeah, one of them's carrying. One of them in the front who's running away is carrying a a, a, a shield, 
and of the men behind, two of them are carrying spears. The group behind, however, uh, perhaps not having seen up close in front what actually happened to Rog, charge forward, blades high, roaring and yelling. Okay. And there are six of them. They split off, fairly well trained, into uh, three groups of two. Two of them straight away toward the half giant. Um, Constantin, you can uh, use a parry against one of these guys if you want. Yes, I will be. Okay. Okay, um, that will be a hit against Ra, unless you make your parry. In fact, two Just hits against point, Ra. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's an 18 plus two. Okay, fine. You managed to parry one blow. Uh, the man next to him lands his blow with his short sword, and these are D8 against uh, large creatures, unfortunately. Uh, Obsidian, though, and Ra, you take a massive two points of damage, putting you down to <clears throat> 47. What? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Tough as nails. It's just a flesh wound. It's fine. I ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> Doesn't even flinch. Two others run in from the side, attempting to flank you and drive you away from the half giant. Uh, a single hit. Dealing only a single glancing point of damage. You're up to 32. And uh, the last two comes straight towards you, Bengal Bengal. Blades raised high. One of them actually looks afraid. Kill it! Kill it quick! Oh, is it good? Both managed to hit. Oh. Just slamming their blades down towards you, <gasps> as uh, perhaps you would toward a particularly frightening vermin. Uh, Jesus, oh. and you take 10 damage from this oh, Jesus. murderous flurry. My god. Um, uh, oh, sorry, eight damage. Oh, okay. Because uh, it's obsidian. obsidian yeah. 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 Mistake. Um, but still, painful, 15 hit points, blood flowing from a pair of injuries. Uh, that's right, Ra, yes. Uh, okay, Portek. <clears throat> uh, one of them uh, who attacked uh, uh, Bengal Bengal, I walk towards and I say, surrender. And I command. Command. Okay. Natural 20. My apologies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. We've got you on the run, he says. You surrender. Uh, Ra. Okay, so because I'm going double-handed, I take it it's the, the the larger to hit number, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so that is a 15 to hit. Yes. Um, for uh, 20 damage. <laughs> I just turn around with the sword, like feeling the vibrations in the sand. She just turns around and I like to, do I kill him? Uh, very, very much, yes. I like to think she just turns around and decapitates one of them with How many sword. times does she kill him? You probably hit him so hard that one of his descendants yeah. dies. The guy that <laughs> called me a dirty bugger. Just yeah, the one, who, the one who could have done it, just straight in half. Yeah, yeah sever him completely in twain. Uh, and there's no sign of her blindness playing uh, playing play here. She positions the blow, spins on the, on the balls of her feet, whack! clear through the guy as if she could see him plain as day. And uh, finally, Bengal Bengal. Yes, I'm sorry. You were saying about me and my friends, how we're on the run. That is a shame. And then I, um, hmm, I think I'm going to go for the, uh, the balls and I'm going to stab him with my two daggers. <laughs> Give him the old one, two. Yes. Yes, I. Right. What am I rolling? D20? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's a 16 plus... Uh, a plus do I... four for your dagger. So plus 20. Plus and four. the other one? Um, 
That's a 12 plus 4, four right? A 12 plus 2, 14, actually, because it's okay. second hand. But both of those are enough to hit, so roll okay. me a 2d4, please. Uh, I need to get another d4. Hold on. Okay, so that's four and three. Seven down to five because it's obsidian. Uh, you stab the guy deep in his uh, <clears throat> in his family jewels. He staggers backward, clutching at fountains of blood, spattering down between his legs and fingers yeah. all across the sand, screaming in a very unmanly fashion. You might want to get that checked out, my guy. Uh, and that's over half their number dead or gone now. This forces a second morale check. Uh, yes. And that's more than enough. Utterly horrified by the slaughter that's being wreaked upon them, um, the grievously injured man drops to his knees and collapses on the sand, whimpering. The remaining three turn. Two of them actually drop their weapons a short sword and a spear and flee away from the sight of the well. Perhaps battle is too strong a word for it, but the brutal massacre that you have wrought upon them. Okay. And the third one, what is he carrying? Um, what remains of his balls? <laughs> also so so he, didn't, he didn't have any weapons in his hand anymore. He had a short sword. He dropped his short okay. sword. Uh, what about a oh. uh, hell okay, uh, potion? Does he on. have a... Just a minute, please. <laughs> um, I'll get to that. Uh, Constantine, you were carrying the, the, the jugs of water, weren't you? Uh, yes, indeed. You and, you and Nyssa? Mm -hmm. uh, believe so, yes. Right, okay. So Nyssa didn't get into melee. Constantine, uh, you did, so... You discover, unfortunately, that in the midst of the battle, one of them has shattered. It's leaking its water across the sand. It puts you down to 19 quarts. I squeeze the, uh, the, the, the fabric into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Just quickly. <laughs> okay. Um, searching over the bodies in a pouch hanging from her belt, you discover that Rog, the captain of the guards, has not one, but two small, desiccated fruit. They smell sweet and ever so faintly spicy. Those of you with knowledge of such things will recall that on Athas, potions come in fruit form, not in bottles. These will be handy. I'll check what else she's got on her. Potion fruit. Yeah, Not only do they heal you, but they make you regular, too. You got a funny feeling they might be healing. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else she has upon her? A handful of ceramic pieces. Uh, in fact, of the guards who you felled her and the two others, you managed to gather a total of uh, a mighty six ceramics between them. Who's, do who's doing party loot? So someone can... Uh, <laughs> I can do it if you want. Can keep cool. a track of that if they want. I've got a little notebook. So we've got six ceramics, 25 silver, two yeah. healing potions. Um, does anyone need a healing potion now? I think we need to give... I mean, uh, I took, what, eight damage? No, don't, don't, no, don't use the healing potions, uh, guys. Don't use it on me, I'm fine, but... Uh, six... Was it six ceramic? Six in total, yeah. These yeah. these fruit have, like, little stickers on them, like Granny Smith stickers, they? <laughs> and, it says, and it says, courtesy of roll for Z. Yeah. Where, where's that literacy is, uh, is illegal, so none of you can read that. Oh, damn it. Oh. <laughs> I, I walk over to Bengal. Bengal, Bengal. He's, he, he's wounded, right? He is quite badly hurt, yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple of them just got proper stuck into him. My head got bonked. Oh, he... he got bonked. I got bonked, man. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I grab hold of uh, uh, a little purple amethyst crystal. Uh, hanging from my uh, from my neck on a from a leather leather thong and I put my hand on uh, on a, on his head. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and cast uh, cure like wounds. Roll me a d8. Ooh. That is a four. 
Okay. Nice. Up to 19. Um, <clears throat> I do it again. Okay. And that is a five. The two injuries dealt upon you by the slave guards, Bengal, close. And your nostrils are briefly filled with the scent of moist soil, rich and fulsome, which then fades. Thank you. You would have been useful to have around when I was a gladiator. Even if you are a dwarf. As far as I remember, your mistress uh, made sure that you were, <clears throat> your wounds were properly treated. Yeah, but, you know, things get hairy. That is true, yes. We're um, on needles. Sorry. Any, any, anyone else in need? Uh, stands right near Ra, so I'll just use my healing um, skill. <laughs> On where they, I assume, cut her leg or scratched it, it seems. <laughs> Administer some battlefield healing. Okay. Um, can you please roll me a, uh, a d20? Fifteen. Fifteen, that's fine. And... Uh, battlefield healing is... If I recall correctly, a D... 1D3. Isn't it? Yeah. So roll me a, a D3, please. D6 halved. That would be a 3. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, Constantine, Stan, uh, tends your wounds, and in fact is enough to to heal the slash that has been laid open across your thigh, uh, Ra binds it well, and what meager injuries that a lot of you suffered from the battle are in fact healed. Um, I make sure that I, I heal myself also once. Yep. For seven points. And that's for the the, 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 the poison damage I got. Yes, and that likewise heals the blistering across your hands. Leaving and Stan will just say to Rob, that should injured. cover you. And he'll head off to go find uh, a bow if one's available, and but definitely one of those short so one of those short swords. Uh, no bows. You are able to recover a couple of short swords, a spear, and uh, I believe a shield. You were looking for as well, uh, Portek. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I would like to have the spear and the the, the, the shield. If that's are okay any of them that carrying one. water or rations or any form of? No, they had come back here. here. They had come back here to look for the uh, for for the containers that you guys are carrying. Which is why they were so happy to see you initially. Ah, is there anything else of use in this burning wreckage? The wagon is thoroughly burned. I mean, you can get together obsidian shards of weapons from the wreckage to uh, to fashion makeshift weapons out of. Um, you, if, had you not found an actual spear, there are enough spars of wood um, to make spears. If anyone has weapon smithing, uh, there's enough bits and pieces to make some some basic uh, some basic weapons. Um, I'll take a few of those obsidian chips. Yeah. You know, Any no daggers or anything handy. lying around? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, there's a, there's a handful of uh, a fragmentary daggers, bits and pieces that you can grab from the remnants of the hold. I yeah. uh, I uh, so I have weaponsmithing and armorer. So right. if anyone needs anything made, um, Ra, Ra will would let them know if anything anything's broken. Just let me handle it i can fix is it up. possible that ra could make some singing sticks for me or is that a little bit out of her league um no she could um Ooh. a hafted weapon small singing sticks uh that would normally take a couple of days but uh non-metal weapons divided by five so she could do that for you within a day to make a pair of singing sticks i could right. do that while i walked maybe yeah <laughs> she would day. kneel Whitt whittling, her. whittling while she walks. Yeah, um, she would kneel down by a uh, Bengal and just say, what? "So, which one here is terrifying? Because I felt they all run away." My darling, 
Who has that the scary was you. face? That was you. I'm not scary. Who has the no, scary no, no, face? No, 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 no. You don't have a scary face. You're just buff as fuck. That's why they ran away. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> should we uh, get going then? <laughs> how, how how long would it uh, take uh, Ra to uh, turn these daggers into into spears for me? Uh, to actually make the spears. Didn't you find um, a spear? No, we, we found a spear, but uh, if, if she make more can, spears. Yeah, I have two daggers. If she can turn those into spears. Yes. Uh, not like that she has to make it from scratch. She can. No, uh, yeah. a day each, perhaps. Oh, okay. The bits that you said I picked up, Mark, the dagger things. Can I? Can they be thrown as daggers? Yes. They can. So how many? Say handful, yeah. Yeah, let's say four. Four. Okay. Four daggers. Yeah. If, if you find some time uh, along the way, uh, Ra, while we're walking, um, maybe you could uh, fashion uh, some spears from these two daggers. Sure, that. Um, what's your name? You sound familiar. My name is Portek. Portek. Uh, you worked with us sometimes, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to see you're okay. Yes. <laughs> And I'm very happy to see that, that you were also okay. <laughs> we're uh, far from okay, everybody. We're in the desert and we need to get out of here. Let's move. Yes, let's do that. So there's n nothing else we can we, we find. Uh, any cloth that we can find? Expert cloth? It, it is burnt. You're lucky to find enough spars that are still intact to fashion weapons out of and enough fragments of obsidian. Uh, mm. The rest of the wagon has, over the last hour or so, has burned very thoroughly down to its axles. So okay. where's our destination then? Um, I will. I will. As soon as the night falls, we're going to start moving. I suppose, right? We head due west yes. to the Stony I'll, Barrens. I'll use the the, the constellations uh, in the sky uh, to make a proper positioning of where we are. Yep. And then navigate uh, us in the direction of uh, lead. Via yeah, the Stony Barrens, or, or straight across the uh, across the desert. Uh, via the Stony Barrens, uh, okay. uh, in, according to the advice of Nissa. Okay, can um, you give me a, a D twenty roll, please, there, Carl? Yes. Uh, that's a twelve. Nicely done. Okay, you're fairly certain. You have the constellation of Banamarash, the caravan up high that way. Over there, crawl of the Kank. And this, at least, when uh, when the sun has set. Okay, and I'm just going to pull up my uh, moon phase program for Dark Sun. Mm. Brilliant, this uh, game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, there it is. And we are at sunset. Okay. After sunset, the large moon Guthe rises, a great greenish gold orb filling the desert with soft light. Every dune cast into stark relief, every shadow dripping with beauty, every dune top itself just seeming kissed with pale green silver. And so you set yourselves off. Heading almost directly due west. Already you're beginning to feel a little bit parched. Your water requirements are down by half for traveling at night. So that'll make the uh, 19 quarts that you have remaining last a little longer. Mm. Up ahead, you can see the terrain beginning to change by the moonlight. The presence of the stony barrens giving the desert, the desert giving way to, uh, to the stony barrens. 
And here, where the rocky ground meets the sandy ground, you catch in the moonlight a glint of liquid. A thicket. Perhaps a half mile across. Growing around a silvery pool of water. An oasis. Surely the moons smile upon you. The thorns of the thicket form a barrier around the water. But if you can reach it, perhaps perhaps it will uh, stave off dehydration a little longer. Okay, I have an idea. Ra, you pick me up, you lower me just above the water, and I will scoop up the water, and then I will throw it behind me, and you guys catch the skins. What mm. do you think? Wait, 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 wait. Um, I take a little, let's take a little time to look at this place here, because... Yeah, I don't, I don't... What? It's water, I, isn't I, it? I, I use my observation uh, skills to... Yeah, uh, and we have to make sure there's no other... Um, you know what, I like the, natural, I like the fact that the two, the two people that have played Dark Sun before are like, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm going to this. Um, <laughs> And uh, Stan would actually go up to the uh, the bush, and I'm, I would use my herbalism to kind of get more of a bearing on what these thorns are, anything I can get from them. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dwarf, you can make me a herbalism roll, and uh, Portek, you can make me an observation check, please. Those are both d20s. I could do an observation as well. Actually, Portek doesn't have observation, so you can stand, there, stand and look at it and go, hmm. Um, and I do, that's though. a herbalism. Have... Okay. Portek doesn't have observation. No. Um, Matthias, roll it, please. Uh, oh, natural 20s. So that's a foul, then. It is. Uh, okay, so, uh, Matthias, you, you see nothing out of the ordinary. Um, just appears to be a, a, a large thicket. Um, Constantine, similarly, you don't recognize this species. Um, um, I, I do the, have observation. Back to you different. lie. You lie. No, no, no. no. I'll, I'll... I don't have sure. it written down here. I will, I will trust I will trust your word, and you yeah. can make me a roll. Okay. 15. I made a roll. 15. Okay. So, um, Constantin, the, uh, the the leaves are kind of grayish pink in color. Can I have a check of, as well on the herbalism? Thorns. Um, Portek, around the base of the thicket, actually, there are bones. Mm. Lots and lots of bones. Desert Guys. mice. A baby Inix. There, a group of uh, of Erdlu who wandered too close. Look at that, guys! Look at the bones at the base of this whole thing. Just look at the bones. Um, minus two hundred experience <laughs> points on out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't sorry. recognize this plant. I don't know what Can, this is. Do I? Do I know what it is? I have yeah, give me a herb, give, give me a herbalism check. Hmm. Uh, Thirteen. That sounds about right. I got like 18 on my are... herbalism. What the deuce? Yeah, the higher the worst, it's it's a fire. Oh, okay. It's yeah. um, you you want to get as high as you can, but no higher than the ability score. It's like blackjack. So if you have a really high ability score, you can roll really really high. If your ability score isn't high enough, then a two a two a two higher roll will go bust. Is it, is you want to okay, cool. Is herbalism based on wisdom? Yes, it is. Oh, good. <laughs> cool. It's my highest yeah. stat. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> You recognize this for exactly what it is, Nissa. Uh. This is the bloody timorous plant. Ah, I relay this information to my companions. Um, it's carnivorous. And if, if what you remember is correct, that's probably not water in there. It's some kind of sap that it secretes. Ah, yeah, let's, let's not try and drink that sap because it's probably its blood or something. I like to think, meanwhile, Ra and, and Gal are like, <laughs> we've she's, been, like, we've been sneakily time. doing it, and then it's like, I hear Kanuva's part just like, slowly brings like, back, like... The whole plant just closes around all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and burps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. let's, let's stay away from that. Fair enough. 
Mark's like, oh. I was secretly okay. hoping it would be Doom right. Spike, but okay. Okay. No, you're too little. Sure. Man. That isn't yeah. water, okay. but keep in mind the plan, because I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? Huh? You can be honest with me. You can be honest. About what? It's good. The, but about the plan that I just had. It's a great plan if it's it good, actually right? was water. Yeah, yes. thank you, Ra. Ra gets it. I just said I thought it was a good. Never mind. I'm sorry. Did I? Was I speaking to you? No. No. No, apparently not. It was a great plan, uh, Bingo Bingo. Yeah, thanks, man. It's Bengal Bengal. I'll have you know. Bengal Bengal. Do you do you work with plants? And she points to Nissa, but she—I don't think she knows Nissa's name. <laughs> she just points at her. <laughs> I've gone deaf. Yes, apparently. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, was, I, I was speaking into the wind. <laughs> just sweat drips from Ra's head, and she's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> yes, I'm. A, I'm, a, well. I'm a herbalist by trade. Oh, that's. But how cool. did you end up? On a slave ship. I was a trader. Uh huh. And I happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Traitor? Draw a sword. Makes sense. And, that's, and, that's, and, that's, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, okay, makes sense. That checks out. All right. Well, I've got no questions. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Barons. <laughs> uh... Here we go. A considerably different landscape. The sand kind of abuts up against it and then bleeds away like water crashing against uh, against a shoreline. And out of this rise a higgledy-piggledy mass of stones and canyons all twisting around each other. Almost immediately, well, the thicket is the first sign of it, but further plant life becomes visible. Three main types bedeck the sides of, uh, of the stony barrens. These things here, like big saguaro cactuses with many arms thrusting toward the moons. Coiled mass of thick thick thorny vines and then these things they're like purple balls clustered together in the dips and slopes can i use my herbalism to check if any of them are edible or have drinking drinky sap yeah roll me again for that please um i rolled a 20 but i I think that's still under my score. <laughs> yeah, I was, no, there's there's actually a penalty for this. So the 20 is a fail. Okay. Uh, you're a little bit away from your um, from, your, from your, your normal trade routes here. The answer is you're not sure. Hmm. There's such a profusion of them. Quite possibly, some of them may have drinkable fluids inside. Or you can... Press on and find a campsite for the night, I suppose. Does Constantine maybe know uh, a bit more about it? He, he seemed to be uh, well versed with herbalism as well. Obviously, not enough, but I'll check. And he will go check the plants. <laughs> Constantine, give me a give me a roll there, please. This is at a minus three penalty, actually. So you got to get fifteen or lower. <laughs> well, I got an eight, it. so that helps. Eight. Okay. Protect Tin can do anything. <clears throat> Constantine, um, you recognize the coiled, twisty mass that's specifically this one here. This is a type of cactus called elven rope. Um, you can actually make rope out of it, uh, but it's so coiled because coiled up inside it are these tendrils that shoot out and attempt to constrict themselves around people. It's another carnivorous plant. Oh, real elven rope. Real elven rope. Yeah. Inside are actual elves. <laughs> <laughs> um, the That's purple... how elves are made. <laughs> the purple bull cactus, uh, it's toxic. That much you know. Um, but the uh, the kind of saguaro tree-like cacti, um, 
these ones you think actually do contain water, uh, although they have a, a, um, a fairly unique defensive system to keep um, uh, to keep away creatures that would uh, that would drink their sap. Um, namely, they've um, they can actually the, the branches can actually move and hit people. So he's just so, looking them over, and he goes, um, "These will try to grab you. Stay away. <sighs> if you eat these, you're going to die. Don't eat them. This one's going to slap you in the face, but it's it's drinkable." And he'll just walk back away from everybody else, and just kind of just stands, maybe four or five feet away from everyone else. Well, Go, t- take what you want. Thank you, sir. That was very informative. Wasn't it just? Take what you yeah. want and go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you get right. me some of that good stuff that doesn't kill you? And he <laughs> he would walk. Now he's walking back in to get the good stuff that doesn't kill you. <laughs> I just remembered, Mark. I've got survival expert sandy wastes. Yeah. You are moving up out of the sandy wastes right okay. now. But yeah. Um, okay, so you're going to try and um, get in and, uh, and take down one of the large cacti before it, uh, yes, before it slaps the, um, you to death? The, the bitch slap cactus, uh, I'm going to go up to it and try to you know, get some, some, some fluid for our, our giant uh, from bitch slap cactus. Okay, it uh, doesn't <laughs> natural twenty. <laughs> okay, um, so it thwocks you for, uh, uh, hold on, let me look here. Oh god, all six. Okay. Good. I should pay for One, this. Two. <laughs> One, six. Yeah. Um, the thing just animates uh, like it was caught in a massive breeze. The limbs <laughs> slamming down towards you as uh, as you draw near. Uh, thankfully, you put some leather armor on, so that's uh, a one, two, three. Are you winning, Tin? Four. <laughs> No! <laughs> you roll and dodge. Uh, two of the limbs you manage to get past. Four of the others hit you, leaving huge bloody thorns sticking out of your arms for a total of okay. four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage. On oh. top of what I already took. Um. <laughs> I think it might be time for those nice berries <laughs> that yeah. we picked up. No shit. Um, uh, so that leaves you on we'll take the damage. That leaves you on six hit points. Um, can you... Uh, Give me oh, a roll, please. Just uh, the thing's armor class ten, so you're almost uh, almost certain to uh, to hit it. I was about to say I, I had thirty two from last fight, and you said I just lost eleven. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's Matthias. I'm taking that off. Yeah, I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> that's a hell of a lot more than eleven. Matthias <laughs> dies. I, I, will take, I will take that trade. That, that, that's a good trade. I will take no, that trade. Sorry, you're on twenty one. My mistake. Okay, sorry, I have uh, the two short swords. You said I'm uh, rolling. Yeah, uh, it's armor class 10. You're almost certain to hit this thing. Everyone seems to be double hit points to me. Is well, that right? I got a nat 20 on the cactus that I couldn't miss anyway. So okay, I right. that going for me. So uh, natural 20, you can do maximum damage. Um, however, because it's an obsidian weapon, it will break. Or you can roll damage as normal. I'll just roll damage as normal. Okay. And uh, roll for the other, other for the other sword as well, because you're attacking twice. 17. Okay, so two hits. So uh, give me 2d6. Fortunately, it's 428 hit points. <laughs> yeah. Six and a four. <laughs> Ten, okay. All right, um, you hew once, twice with the obsidian blades and hack halfway through the cactus's, uh, cactus's main, the main, main stem. Um, you're gonna stay put or you're gonna back away? The thing is still flailing madly at you. Sadly, Ra said, are you winning, Tim? So I have to stay there. <laughs> One, two. Oh my god. I can't fail this. Three. Um, I mean, another okay. three limbs slammed down. The rest of you are just kind of standing around while he's like, Yeah, we're watching. <laughs> like, we're watching. Wow, we're just wow, like, you know. Over and over and over again. I'm like sat on Ra's head. Just like, okay, can I? <laughs> maybe I feel doing? like I need to help him. <laughs> three, four, five. Another seven damage to you, Constantine. Vortak is analyzing the whole uh, attack patterns of this 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 yeah. creature to start uh, developing kind of a strategy around it. 
Yeah, it's, it seems to have a, a certain sort of tremor sensibility to, to detect where you're standing. As he just walked in blindly, it was able to levy half a dozen attacks against him. Now he's being more careful. The number that are actually able to hit him has dropped considerably. He was only hit by five that time. Okay. okay. I have a question. What if someone threw me at the cactus? I have a better idea. No, you don't. I'm going to, I'm going to create the illusion... Um, Basically, I'm going to use my uh, my will to do false sensory input to the cactus and make it believe that he is not there. Oh, boring. Just throw the halfling. Just let me know when I can cut His it. Again, pla I'm plant pissed. telepathy. Plant telepathy. I will let you know in just a second. But I, it's, I'm... it's false sensory input. It has tremor yes. sense. Surely it, yes. I can make yes. it not sense it. Yes. Uh... But there is a modifier for that. Uh, plants gives you a power check penalty of minus eight. Minus eight. Yeah, it's a plant. You need to get oh, first get, to try. Get, yeah, first yeah. Have to get into the mindset of, of a plant before you can actually. Uh, you have to negate those the plant. <laughs> yeah. To defeat the bush, you must become the bush. Um, <laughs> I I rolled an eight plus four, so twelve. I don't know if that's no, that's probably not a success. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, hey, man, it was worth a try. It do was I, worth do, a try. Do yes. I lose the PowerPoint? Uh, no, you don't. They, okay. they only go okay. if, the, uh, if the power is, is successful. Okay. You can feel some kind of vague avocado-esque awareness there, <laughs> but you're not quite able to... to Fisha Vakadu. Yeah, to, to, to reach the Fisha Vakadu level of consciousness. Well, to, uh... I guess someone's plan isn't so stupid anymore. Constantine, hey, roll again, please. I was just trying to help. I, you know what's I, great, I, too? Is you have what a D twenty, you have a D twenty inspiration. I know. So if I yeeted you, you could use I would it. do it, man. It would 16 work. and a nineteen. It Both feels hit. the it feels the tremors in the ground, guys. Why don't we start doing a whole? That's eleven uh, damage. Congo dance around it, so that uh, it can't feel the tremors of uh, uh, Constantine anymore. Yeah, and then we throw me at it. Good oh. idea. <laughs> At a particular lull in your conversation, you realize that Constantine has actually now chopped it down. <laughs> he's beat, We're beaten arguing to a, about he's what beaten to do, to a and pulp. he's like... <laughs> yeah. He's, he's like dead. <laughs> bleeding, like, <laughs> cactus spine sticking out of his hair, his shoulders. No, guys, we have to go around it and throw me, not... <laughs> so, so as, as it falls over, um, he'll actually just call out and just be like, Ra, come and get a drink. Ra, Ra honestly just sits there, tilts her head, because in her mind, she can't see anything. She just imagines this, like, minefield of all these dangerous cactuses that if she touches, <laughs> she will die. And it's like, come um, over here. She's like, I don't I'll know. Get, I'll get the so, cactus, and I'll, like, pull it over. And, like, uh, no. In front of you. Uh, if, um, when he says that, he actually is turning around with the blades and taking a defensive position in front of the cactus. What? Well, why? If he sees you approaching, he will say, Ra, follow my voice and come get a drink. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm, what, I, I, what? We have water for everybody else. This is for Ra because she needs to drink more. I will follow the voice and pray that it is an empty trail ahead of me directly to his voice. <laughs> there is indeed an empty trail. You follow the sound of footsteps and gentle echolocation off the, sa off the sand. I, and, I will uh, say something. Uh, this is probably you guys have seen him kind of moping around he stood around with the swords like that this is the first time he's actually been in a stance where it's like he might know what he's doing nah he just got battered by a cactus no chance <laughs> I don't think he knows what he's doing at all man's got a cactus spine sticking out of his face I think I'm all good I'm good <laughs> like, um, I, I get over my there. left butt cheek I get over there and like I, I, I guess when she gets over there, so anyone like, she's just like, does anyone have healing for tin? And then she will try and find a way to drink from this cactus without hurting herself. Yeah, you can <laughs> you, you can feel your way around the spines, and in fact, it's actually more like eating the pulp. Um, and through this, you actually manage to get well, what would amount to half your daily rations, which is in fact all you need um, because you guys are traveling at night. Um, so that sees you clear for another day without yet again dipping into the uh, into the party supplies. Um, nice. Well done. Good move. Um, is there any of these I can get poisons from? 
No. Uh, according to what Constantine has told you, none of these are answers actually poisonous. Um, oh, actually, no. Uh, I told, I told to, them the purple bull was... Uh... The purple ones. If you were to take that, you could get you could get an ingested poison out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ingested, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's ingested. Yes. Really handy for dinner parties, but not really useful it's, in combat. Mm. Okay. Well, he's, it, it, when he's... Obviously, he's watching... Matthias is watching quite a lot when you're talking about herbalism and stuff because he, he knows a bit but he's still in training so he's just like paying attention to both the cactus man and uh, Nyssa cactus man so you're going to find a campsite yes yeah towards the end of the night first we need to use as much of the night as possible to, to make mm. our make our way as far as yeah. we can. Um, um, yes, um, we, we also are taking our time to get water, right? What are we? Finding. Yes. I think uh, this is a, kind of what I assumed this was, but... Okay. No, no. <laughs> but... let's, not, let, let's not assume. Let's clearly state okay. it to... Uh, okay, well, yeah. I'm yeah. using the water find skills. Find, yes. Yes. I yes. I would use it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Should we all use it, or yeah? Uh, if everyone uses it, that's water that we're not it's... using from our from our supply. I don't okay. have that. The only one who doesn't have this is Ra. Is that correct? I don't have it either. Okay. I thought Ra and Matthias don't. don't is the, the does, the cac do. does the cactus have enough water or pulp in it to to also supply? Ra's been taken care of for the day. Um, the rest of you, except for uh, Matthias, please give me water find checks. I rolled a nine. I don't know if that's enough. That's a seventeen. I rolled... Um, 13. I thought I had water for him, but obviously I don't. I rolled a 7. Okay. Those I have to get underneath, up. right? Hold on. Um, yes, you do. We are yeah. in Stony Barrens, so it's at a minus 3 check. Um, so I'm just going to go down the list. Bengal, give me your number again, please. Oh, sorry. That was me. <laughs> 7. You rolled a 7. Yeah. Fine. Uh, Constantine, what did you get? 13. Just. Um, Nissa? Uh, I rolled a 9. Okay, fine. Uh, Portek? I rolled a 17. Oh, no. Um, and Rod didn't. Okay, uh, so um, everybody... It's at a mi minus 3? Minus 3, yeah. So that's a so fair. I make it. No. So, uh, your water find is 18. Is it on so wisdom? The, the, the minus 3 lowers it to 15. Yeah, and that's so it's where 17 oh, I thought it was fail. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, so, uh, yeah, that leaves Portek and Matthias as the only ones without water. Uh, take it you guys are going to have uh, a couple of quarts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that puts us down to two quarts each. Uh, 15 we have left. The others, you manage to find smaller cacti bearing water here and there where condensation is beginning to bead on the edges of leaves. Um, Portek, something has rattled your nerves, perhaps. You're just, you're just not properly focused. And you trudge back to the campsite at the end of the, uh, the rest of the evening when you guys have been scouring the surrounding area. And to your shame, you are forced to ask for a couple of quarts of water from... Uh, the party's slowly dwindling supply, yeah. and you join Matthias in a, a small amount of quaffage. A drink of a drink of shame, yeah. A drink of shame, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Matthias is not ashamed. Okay. Overnight, the moons rise high. Raoul chasing Guthe across the heavens. The little red moon chasing the great green golden one. Dawn is coming. And you've set yourselves up a rough camp in the lee of some stones to, uh, to prepare for the oncoming heat of the day. Do you guys want to do that, by the way? Just, uh, just saw Panda's message. Yeah, if we can give Tin one of the berries because he's quite low no, on health. No, 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 no. Let's let's save the berries till the very last moment. I have one spell left for him. Okay, I'm just thinking, just in case we get into combat, he is incredibly low. I, I, I was keeping the the last spell that I had for uh, before we go to sleep, which is now. 
Okay, so he's gonna, no worries. He's gonna get a, he's gonna get a healing spell now, and I would I would we should keep those potions until we are out of spells. Because they are rare. We don't get them uh, often. We're very lucky to get them. Oh, you haven't met our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the okay. people in the Dark Sun Desert are going, man, I hope those viewers are there. <laughs> <laughs> the moons will smile upon you, I'm sure. Okay, so give me a, uh, a healing... Uh, yeah. Uh, Cure Light Wounds roll for him, please, D8. Yeah. Rolls a one. Uh, hey, roll a seven. Oh. Seven, okay. Uh, Constantine, that puts you back up to 21 hit points. As the powers of the earth element rush through you, and like uh, like Bengal, Bengal, your nostrils are filled with a rich loamy scent. I've got I've got to ask quickly, Mark is is my hit points right? Thank is you, it, Forte. I see. Uh, I'm Matthias, a, I have you at seventeen. Yeah, I'm a fight fighter bard, but obviously I've got the improved hit point thing. Yep. So I'm, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed that other people were like twice as many. I like them more than you. Oh, okay. <laughs> just the way the dice go, man. Um, thank, thank you. <laughs> okay. A day of rest. Under the blankets you've liberated from the Argosy, and the heat rises. The temperature pushes over 100. 110, 115, as the day reaches its mid. You are currently all in shade. No need to, uh, to make heat protection rolls, but it's only getting hotter. Portek, roll me a d20, please. 18. Jesus, 18. Yeah. Okay. Despite the heat, you nevertheless manage to get a few hours of rest beneath the sweltering sun beating down through the canopy and uh, are able to recover your spells. Lucky. Overhead. You hear cawing, echoing sounds, accompanied by a frantic buzzing. This is just in the last hours of the day, as the sun is once more setting. Poking your heads out of the uh, out of your makeshift tent, <coughs> high overhead, you can see some kind of large insect being beset by a pair of avian creatures. Those of you who know them recognize Arakokra. There are two of them, high overhead. Look like nothing so much as black, disheveled vultures. Heads completely devoid of feathers. Wrinkled skin, big snapping beaks, spears clutched in their feet as their wings flap on the late afternoon air. And they're stabbing at this insect high overhead. Now, I don't know that any of you have any ability to intervene at range with either missile weapons of spe or spells. Okay. Wait, uh, missile range, so like throwing darts? You don't, yeah, you don't have any darts though. I, I do. I, darts. I could intervene, could I but throw... I don't know. I don't know if this is anything that I want to intervene in. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. I'm just asking. It's like the Arakokra are hunting, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So then, as you watch, they stab repeatedly at the thing. Until finally, it uh, it loses its ability to stay aloft, and buzzing fitfully descends, and you can see it spiraling down until it skids across the sand on a, the edge of a, a rocky, sandy outcrop, a few hundred yards distant. The aracocra must have seen you, 
They circle overhead. One descends down toward where the large insect was. Big black and red thing. Its body almost the size of a man. The second Arakokra swoops down low over your camp. <sighs> gliding on its wings. You can see it kind of looking down at you through its beady eyes. Trying to Give assess it a you. salute. Showing that we've just... seen it. Cause once. And then the pair of them are light on the distant dune. And pull something from the mandibles of the insect. Some kind of... You know, it's hard to tell at this distance. Uh, it's about the size of a melon. Uh, some kind of waxy ball. One of the Arakrocker, you can see, pecks at it. It breaks open. And you can see them taking turns to dip their beaks in. You think they're drinking whatever is inside. Looks like an they egg or something. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. They finish whatever it was, leave the body of the insect, and take a loft, and fly off into the west, disappearing among the crags of the rocky badlands. Can I eat the bug? <laughs> but before we do that, massive thank you very much to Pixie Queen, who's just donated $15. Wow. Let's, let's get a healing potion and another inspiration. I do have a new macro. So obviously, Leia, you've already got an inspiration, haven't you? Yes, yeah. I do. So you, I, I am going to click yeah. this button, and then whoever gets the highest wins it. So it looks like it's the DM that wins yeah! an inspiration. No! Uh, <laughs> for, I got a woman. <laughs> yeah, for, for those in chat, this is a and d obviously 2E, but with some house rules. and we're, We do donation... Uh, and stuff like that for equivalent of 5e inspirations and stuff like that. If it means that I get to roll more dice, I am willing to break no. the laws of game design for no. you. No, yes. fuck off. But there is, there is another healing fruit as well. So thank you very much, Pixie. Yeah. Much appreciated. That's D20, is it? You yeah, you get a D20. All. The D20s you can keep from session to session. As soon as you use it, it's gone. You can only have one at a time. Yeah. The D6s yeah, yeah. have to be used on the day. Like Lee says, it's not standard second edition rules, but we're willing to try it out uh, and see how it works. And if it turns out that it really sucks, we'll stop doing it. Um, but right at the moment, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> For us. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you just won it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dear. <laughs> Suck it, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think that would be an ideal point for us to uh, take a bio break. Hello, welcome back to uh, Dark Sun and the second part of A Little Knowledge. Our heroes are currently weathering out the last of the day underneath a makeshift tent on the edge of some stony barrens deep within the great alluvial sand wastes, miles from anywhere. They're hoping to make the dwarven village of Kled, where Portek has made his home, and there, if anywhere, they can resupply and figure out what to do with their lives after having escaped slavery. The afternoon wears on, the sun sinking into the west, below the ringing mountains, turning the afternoon to blood and gold. And uh, the escaped slaves uh, have questions for themselves and probably a few for each other as well. So this is when we kind of wake up at the end of the day. If you if you can call it if you call what you've been doing sleeping, yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, I I prepare and, and restudy and realign myself to uh, to the elements. My elements, yeah. Um, and I go to uh, Tin and I see how he's doing because he, he I left him still wounded. Uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, the morning. He is still suffering. Uh, he's pulled all the cactus spines out for the most part, but his body is covered in a number of welts uh, where Do we heal that where the animated, animated tree had a go at him. <laughs> um, okay. You need a, a considerable amount of rest to properly heal. Okay. Well, I, I, I will, I will further this rest along with giving him uh, yet another healing. I will so slap away your hand. If you're reaching, is, do you have to? T are you touching him to do it, or are you doing it from a? Is there a distance base on your? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm touching you to do it. I, I'm, I'm. 
He would smack your hand away. It's a hit point per day with what you've been doing, so I'll just adjust those numbers by one. <laughs> um, you, you don't want to be further healed. We need you strong. Huh? Save it for the others. <laughs> but where we I find another left. cactus? I think, I think it is it is important that you uh, that you stay strong. That actually brings me to the subject. What's going on with you? I'm I don't know. I don't know you this way. What happened? You're you're normally a strong. You're 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 astute. You, you, the, I'm uh, alive. So are we all? That's what I am. So okay, let's just buddy. keep going. All right, you you got some screws loose. Clearly, at least and... I can reach them. Oh, 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 you did not just insult my height, good sir. I will. I'm climb sitting. I'm at your height. Your... Mm, okay. Listen, I'm trying to have a conversation with you here. I mean, I know you're a man of very few words, but listen, if I want to continue, you know, walking around these desert wastes with you, I'm gonna need you to tell me what the hell is up. Because quite frankly, I don't trust it. Good people are dead. We're alive. Good I don't know that any of you at this point, with the exception of save one or maybe two, deserve that lot. But if you're worried, I'll do my best to keep you alive. All right. All right. I don't know you. I look up at Ra, and I go, can you vouch for this guy? In? Yeah. Because I am one second away from slicing him from head to toe. Oh, don't do that. No, Tin's good. It's good with you say so. Life. Where were you when this all happened? What happened me? to our lady? He's looking directly at Portek. Oh. oh, at me? Yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't there. I was in my quarters, as like normal. As she had retired for the evening, like normal. But I do know a little bit more. I saw, of course, a little bit more. And I look pointedly at uh, Matthias. He just smiles. I'll follow your eyeline. <laughs> He's sitting there sort of making a batch of something. I'll start that, Mark. Okay. That's fine. I'll be making singing sticks for uh, Bengal. But considering where uh, <clears throat> we all ended up, I presume we all got due payment for deeds done. One way to look at it. What is, what's, our, what's our mission? What are we supposed to be doing now? Well, maybe somebody can highlight to me why she got killed. I'm not completely clear about that. It is not clear to me. And uh, Constantine will look around everybody else and just... We can talk a little of what I know when we're somewhere more safe than under the sun. Okay. And when I know that everyone here is not going to do the same to us. Ah. Well, you never know that. That's my experience in the world. But, <clears throat> fair point. Uh, I suppose that our survival is uh, should be on the, first, the forefront of our minds at the moment. For now. As soon as we arrive in Kled, if we arrive in Kled, uh, if we make it to Kled, we can have this conversation in more uh, in earnest. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, let's just get a little bit further. Just a little, little bit further away. Yeah. I, I have... Sorry, you Ruff. go on. Tell me, right. I I think um, while we're all here together, it might be good for us all to introduce ourselves. We're out here. I, I don't know how far away we are from somewhere, but it might be good if we at least knew each other's names. Why not? My name is Nisa. Nisa, the tra trader. Yes. I am Matthias. Matthias. And she's almost like aiming her finger, probably at nothing, like just at the distance, like waiting for the next person. <laughs> I, I sh I, you know, you, when she points her finger know, out, I shake it. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, you know me, Portek, and you know Tin. Yeah, but what if Const other people don't? What if other people don't know their names? Hmm. Constantin. Don't call me Tin. Constantin. And. And you'll hear his voice. He'll turn towards Ra and go, you can call me Tin. Oh, special treatment. I like it. So you have uh, Portek. Um, uh, and we have a, a constant Tin. Um, and then we have um, Bengal. Um, no. and, and I'm Ra. Um, me and Bengal were um, gladiators together. Yeah, together. We're Min and Max. Yeah. Scourge. But, but the seas. By the way, does does Ra sound quite this high pitched, or is does her size also give her quite a booming voice? Ra has a very, like she probably does sound like that, but when in combat, uh, when you when she when they fought, she takes on a much more deeper like booming voice and right. kind of like grow. Like, but it's very much put on. Hmm. Naturally, she kind of almost tries to take kind of like a meek, mild kind of. Almost appearance right. to her as well. Right, right. I'm yeah. sticking with the, the crowd. Giant. Loves the deep voice. They go nuts for it. If you if you can cut a man in half like that, then yeah, I think we're safe. Yeah, Vengal's really good at doing that. Oh, I saw him use a blade. It, yeah, nice and quick. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Missed his vitals over it. That's a good. That's a good hit. What do you mean I missed his vitals? I stabbed him in the nuts twice. I gave him the old one too. I hit my mark, man. Oh, if that's what you were aiming for, then great. Yes, that's what I was aiming for. It's about as far as I can reach above my head before I'm climbing up people, so, you know. That, that's why you should use a spear. Get more reach. That I feel you. like you're very biased. We're, we're, we're improvising <laughs> right now, spear. Portek. You should know that. Mm. I don't speaking exactly of... have my weapon of choice. No, well, no, no, but I, I, I see speaking you of improvising. No. Actually, Ra, you have pretty much finished the singing sticks by now. Uh, I have uh, my weapons of choice. Ra will like twiddle them and then hand them over to where Bengal is. Probably almost like she then holds it out and then lowers it. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, like knee length. Yeah. Like, Thank you. <laughs> They're pretty nicely made. The, uh, the fact that they're made from fire blackened wood gives them a really interesting mottled effect through the uh, through the grain. Mm -hmm. But uh, you twirl them back and forth. <laughs> ah, a few times. An elegant it's weapon. It's, it's, it's clumsy it's, as a blaster. Minus <laughs> 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 500 experience points. They start making the, the, um, the good whistling noise that you're used to. And uh, yeah, a job well done. And Portek, you have uh, daggers for me, yes? Here you go. Two daggers. And she will start trying to make spears with those. Okay. You're an hour or two into that. When the sun sets. Room? So far, there is no food. You had gruel yesterday, and you've had water yesterday and today. But you're running a little low on food. You can push by on empty bellies for another day or so. You can try hunting. That wasp that those guys killed. Oh yeah, let's have a look at that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I get the venom. Okay. Beggars, beggars can't be choosers. No, that's right. Yeah. 
You head out into uh, the sun is set. Raoul, the little red moon, is first into the sky tonight. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. And uh, you head across a couple of hundred yards, and indeed there is uh, the red and black insect lying sprawled where it lay. There are a couple of small desert scavengers, a tiny pair of Zatal, pecking ooh, away ooh. at it. Ooh. As you draw near. Zatal. Yeah. <laughs> Project force on one of them. <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> it feels very unfair. 16. 16. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I <laughs> do five damage to it. <laughs> it falls over dead. The other, Woo, other, dinner. The other's a tile crap ridiculously goes. Can I, can, <laughs> I hit, can I hit it before it runs away? Uh, it a, it actually missile. literally goes like that, right? They, they scream. Yeah, they make screaming yeah. noises. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw a dagger at it. Go on then, roll. Uh, da, 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 d20. Plus, I uh, rolled a 19. <laughs> nice. In 19, yeah, you hit it, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so the other Zatal is already scampering away across the... Uh, Zatal, by the way, is like a, a lizard that runs around on its hind legs. Tiny little cute things. They're um, chickens. They're desert chickens. That's <laughs> they're little desert nice. chickens. Nice. <laughs> and they have uh, really uh, sharp feathers. And your, yeah, your, this, uh, this uh, obsidian blade <laughs> takes it through the back of the neck and it... Pulls, uh, uh, dinner's on. ready. Yeah, I picked that up and picked the blade. <laughs> so I want to Shen? check the wasp for yeah. the poison gland and stuff. Okay, there's no stinger. Oh, okay. Doesn't have enough poison. Um, that gourd it was carrying is uh, lying broken open to one side, and judging from the way the sand has clumped around it, you're almost certain it was containing water. Right. Is there anything we can get off this creature then? You could turn its chitin into a shield. Um, you could make, I don't know, a couple of shields. If, uh, you could make a suit of chitin uh, breastplate out of it. Uh, you could make a parasol out of its wings. Um, you could take its head off and make a really fucking cool hat. Can I eat it? That's a really um, cool idea. Let's say, can I use my hunting and uh, basically slightly, nicely uh, piecemeal this thing out into useful components? Yeah, absolutely. May I please chew on its innards? I will let you know if there's innards in a moment. I am asking very nicely. Hear <laughs> <Tell> me <laughs> out. I'm hungry, love it. Hear me out. I don't know if... Big half giant with a dainty uh, wing parasol as I stroll through the desert. <laughs> <laughs> they look like little fairy wings. Yeah. Oh, no. So using your animal, using your animal law, uh, Constantine. Yes, you're able to s separate the legs. Uh, these, if roasted over a fire, will produce some extremely nice, almost kind of lobster meat. Um, the uh, the heart and lungs can be taken out, and in fact, Bengal could probably eat those um, if you wanted to. And then you break open the chitin, um, scoop out the, the the head for anyone who wants to make themselves the first uh, weird Athasian hat of the uh, of the campaign. Oh my god! I want for those of you who don't know, there is a long tradition in Dark Sun of putting weird fucking shit on your head. I want to make a bonnet. <laughs> I want to make a bonnet. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, Stan would turn around and be like, he would just start separating, putting these aside to go. These are food, and he just starts, and that's it. He just moves them towards like wherever uh, Bengal Bengal is. Uh, just to go. Here's food. And he, yeah. And he, Here's and so he'll move that part towards her because that's what or he uh, was more interested in, and then go and then just start piecemealing everything out. Any poisons in there? Maybe. Was there no sign poison? that this thing was venomous at all. No. Oh, that's a shame. There's no. There's no poison. Um, I'm going to uh, make a very small fire. Yep. These legs will go great with that. Cook, cook the cook the zatal meat. Yep. Make some zatal skewers. Panda. <clears throat> Just a quick question: Are we aware of how the mistress died? Do we know how what her cause of death was? You've heard weird. You've heard stories that she was uh, had a throat cut. You've heard that she was poisoned. Poison. You've heard that she was taken out and hanged as a uh, as a traitor with the rest of her servants. With the uh, with the constant question of poison from Matthias. Uh, Raoul kind of uh, <laughs> just kind of her head kind of goes a little bit like 
and she just like leans to Vingal and just says, "Don't, don't let him near my water, please." Don't worry. Do I hear that? She would probably. I don't know how close you are, but she would like whisper. You could be sat there right next to me. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, I don't think you leaning down to a halfling, like crouching to whisper into my ear, is very inconspicuous. However, I have not caught on to this yet, but I will just nod and be like, okay, all right. This is one of those weird half giant things I will never understand, but I will do it anyway. (laughs) Okay. So you make yourselves a, a passable meal out of uh, Weezer and Zatal skewers, and uh, you can actually end up with uh, a dozen or more, more Zatal knives. Um, their feathers are sharp. They dull very quickly. I'm but keeping for the first them because few, they're for, good yeah. trade, trade goods. Excellent good trade goods. Yeah. Um, as the moon is kind of uh, reaching its height in the sky, uh, it happens a couple of times over the course of your meal. Um, Another one of the insects passes O'Bai overhead. Just oh, buzzing right. f- from north to south. Uh, Nothing to see here. It's a good good, good kind of height up. And as it is caught in the moonlight, you see it's got a large waxy ball kind of in its front mandibles. Have we got anything that we could throw? Can I it? slap it? Can I just be like... <laughs> no, it's a good, it's, it's a, a good distance up. Um... And about half an hour later, another one goes. Oh. And over the course of the over the course of the couple of hours of your meal, there's about four or five buzz mm. overhead. I wonder where they're getting that from. Where are they flying from? I don't think somewhere, it's about. somewhere to the north to somewhere to the south. Who knows? We don't have any missile weapons, so. With their tra- Besides- trajectory, do they look like they're going up, or are they literally they're just going? Sh- like horizontal. They look. Um, hmm. Does, does it look Good like they look like they're actually descending? Yes. Descending. They do look like they're descending. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't think we really want to. Do we know what these creatures are? I mean, have we seen them around? Okay. No one has uh, survival. Uh, who's got animal lore? Um, I Constantine. do. Can I've you got roll survival me a... wastes. I have it as well. I think. Okay, actually, no, that survival sandy waste will work as well. Um, both yeah. of you, please roll me a d20. Um, Constantine okay. and, uh, and Matthias. Bingo. Uh, I rolled and a 15. Me. 15. <laughs> really nice. I don't you know say you've got roll. survival sandy wastes, Lee? Expert, yeah. Survival expert sandy wastes. Yeah, I, uh, I must have... Uh, it's in racial some... abilities. Yeah, oh, okay, that's where it is. And what did you get, Constantine? Same as me, 15. 15. Okay, they're called Weezers. In the in the distant future, a number of them will go on to form a, a popular '90s band. Don't, but for the time don't, being... don't, don't make the joke. Please. <laughs> it's too late for the for the for the time Minus being. Minus two hundred XP. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're a uh, a large species of uh, of desert wasp. Um, Are they aggressive or what wasps going to be? Uh, they're divided into uh, three castes. Two really. There's, they, they have queens, they have soldiers, and they have workers. Um, the workers aren't venomous. The soldiers are. Mm. It sounds to me in, they, that they live in hives, so there's probably a hive nearby. Exactly. Sounds to me like we should stay away from those. It's yes. nice if they have water and they drop it uh, in front of us, but we're not going to be looking uh, for trouble in their hive. I agree. <laughs> Which direction do you think it is? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Can I track that bird? <laughs> Okay. If only so, we could make a net and just like fish <laughs> the sky. Judging by your uh, your your scanning of the map, you think you are probably yeah a day away from uh, you. Uh, sorry, two days, two nights travel away from uh, from Cled. So you need to go. An, uh, you need to go another day deep into the uh, deeper into the Stony Barrens. And then uh, turn sort of southwest from there. Um, to our so left, yeah. Basically, yeah, basically, basically uh, to the left, yeah. Two nights travel. And so I presume uh, off you set. Yeah. Yeah. Have I made I... my poison enough to let it brew for 24 hours? Yes, and it'll be it'll kind of bring and it'll pop by your side and be ready for the next. Uh, uh, the beginning can I just say I'm going to do that every night? Or do you want me to tell you every night so, I'm doing it? 
No, you have to let me know that you're doing it every night, yep. but then I'll know that you have a, a dose of poison every day. Yeah. I, I know that I. I know that I drink a lot of your water, so if you ever need help carrying anything or being carried, just let me know. Well, technically, it's your water as well, as you're the one who helped us escape. Thank you. But still, I, I, want, I want to be useful. You are very useful. You, you are, are extremely useful. useful. And you're well worth the water, so mm -hmm. don't worry. Mm -hmm. Right, just make give sure me to take care of yourself first. Uh, everybody, uh, roll me d20s, please. D20s. Self care, everyone. Self care. Eight. It's important. Twelve. Five. I was going to say, actually, Matthias, you don't need to roll because you don't have the proficiency. <laughs> oh, was, um, oh, it's eleven. Water stuff, yeah. Again. Yeah. Then... Oh, is this water searching for water? I won't. Then, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, and it's a minus three. Okay. Um. So let me go through. Go down again. Uh, Bengal, Bengal. What did you get? Uh, I got a five. You got a five. Uh, yeah. Constantine. Eleven. Yep. Uh, Nissa? Uh, five. Nice. Portek? Twelve. Good job. And Ra doesn't have any. Okay, so all of you, over the course of that night's travel, managed to find succulent cacti. Again, more late night desert condensation, um, where it's, you've learned how to make little water traps with some of the, uh, some of the cloth that you have with you, and find sufficient water to avoid, uh, to avoid suffering any further dehydration. Um, and so I guess that's another two quarts for Ra. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, no. Uh, four gallons, so it's... It's... Two four, gallons, so it's four quarts. It's, yeah. Who, whose side are you on, Nissa? On. Whose side are you on? Two yeah, gallons. Eight, it's, it's eight <laughs> quarts. It's eight. Nissa, come on, dude. Don't tell the so teacher about homework, six. man. <laughs> So you have seven I'm, left. I'm the plant. <laughs> and another another two for Matthias. <laughs> You're down to just over a gallon of water now. Wow. So our, our half-giant friend will not Attack have enough water high. for tomorrow. Don't sound too bad now, does it? She will not. Uh, no. I it's per day. I, yeah. I, I thought that meant 24 hours. Is it literally day, night, day, night? It is hours. where we are doing yeah. it for 24 hours, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. My, my mistake. I, I, I didn't realize we jumped like that much time. Yeah. Sorry, we my sleep, bad. We sleep, we sleep during the day and we walk during the night. And only that is the reason that you can halve your water rations. If we would be walking during the day, you would double uh, the, the water you just used. Yeah. Damn. The next, we... uh, the next sunset, you'll be turning toward the southwest. And tonight, in amongst the crags of the Stony Barrens, you make what you hope will be your final camp. And you count yourself lucky that your only encounters so far have been with airborne weezers and the guards of the caravan. Down where the Stony Barrens meet the sandy wastes, around about midnight, you spotted several mounds in the desert and noticed at least two or three of the weezers descending, alighting upon them and crawling into them. Indeed a hive, but it is perhaps safer not to go crawling around underground in small constricted spaces with highly venomous insects that will lay their eggs in you. Camp is set for that night. And you have hopefully Claire to look forward to in the morning. I will mm -hmm. just obviously do my poison thing that night. Uh, yeah. I, don't know. I will keep making these spears for Portek. Okay. Portek, you're going to be resting? Is, I, is... I will be resting, yeah. Um, okay, roll me another d20, please. Yeah, but before I rest, I'm going to see whether I'm going to use some of my spells, yeah? <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll, uh, d20, right? I'll roll yeah, it do already. It. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 12. 12, okay. What's, what spells are you thinking of using? Uh, that's what I'm looking at now. Give me a sec. Okay. I'll let you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nissa, anything from you? Um, I just wanted to um, verify that we're going to make it to Kled the following day. You should do, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, I will use... Sorry. Will I, re I regain my PSPs every day? Uh, you can give me a d20 roll as well, actually. 
a nine. I don't know what that means. So, in your case, no. But I've had the two nights before since the the last time I used them. So yeah. So no, you haven't. Ro what you can roll me roll me a second d twenty, please. A fifteen. Okay. Um, so you have them back since from a, a nine and a fifteen. So you've recovered them since the attack on the cactus. So that's a yes. Yeah, because I didn't use I used actually I used it on the Zital successfully, but not against the cactus successfully. So I didn't use a PSP. Right. Yet. Okay. 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 Yeah. So. So. Um, so in that so in that case, only the, only the nine applies. So the answer is no. Oh, okay. So I I. Um, okay. Yeah, those ones haven't come back. For okay. you, it's stifling. <laughs> so what am I exactly rolling here? Uh, these are po these are saves against poison. When you sleep under 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 shade during the day, you don't always get enough rest to recover spells or PSPs. Oh, gotcha. Hot, stifling, uncomfortable, sweaty. Can't. So I'm down quite... to nine. I'm down to nine PSPs. Yeah. Can't saying. quite yeah. find a nice place to lie without that damn rock sticking in your back. Right, 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 right. Gotcha. Breathing with your mouth open, finding it all dry. It's horrible. Yes. Sleeping next to a half giant. Sleeping next to a half giant. Yeah, yeah. Having having to read uh, dwarfs uh, Zoom messages about um, cozying up to hard glistening muscles. <laughs> it's so okay. soft, like a rock. <laughs> What's wrong with rocks? <laughs> okay, Portek, were you going to cast some spells there? You said. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm going to uh, to Constantine, and I'm going to force him to accept uh, another uh, healing spell yeah. before I go and sleep. How are you forcing him to do this? Shut up. Heal. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, heal. So basically sneak up behind him and go, Bam! Yeah. <laughs> surprise. Yeah, he. if you're literally just walking up no. behind him and popping him with it, then he's just, he'll just shrug it off. He's currently just back down to being kind of just out of it. So he's, yeah. he can't okay. fight you. Okay. So I've, I've healed him. How much? Uh, for six points. 28 now. Okay. And nice. I will cast one other spell, um, which is... Create water. No. no. Um, create holy elements. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Holy earth. That's take, that, takes an, that takes me an hour to cast, yeah. so that's... Okay. Cast um, make did, house. Did you make your save, by the way, for regaining spells? I missed that. Yes. You did. I think. Yes. At 12. Yeah, I asked you, 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 yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 What does create holy element do? It it's creates like a, uh, Huh? Go ahead. I'm just curious. I, I was going to give a flippant reply, but you might want to give an accurate one. So. <laughs> um, it, it, it depends what it depends what kind of priest you are, but it creates uh, uh, a holy um, element. Yeah. Um, like. Yeah. Well, and in yeah, my case, what a, holy rock, a holy legit. rock. Seems legit. I've got, a, a holy rock. I've, got a, I've got a boulder. Yeah, well, no, it's not as small. It's like a hand to this side. It's rock. a holy which, rock. Which, which is what, your pet rock it. then or something? <laughs> it's my pet rock. Give it googly eyes. <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. All right. Okay. Um, so then some degree of rest follows. Constantine. I'm going to need a uh, D10 roll from you, please. Leave me alone. <laughs> I hurt so much. An eight. An eight. Okay. And one more. A seven. A seven. Okay. And he died. I hear death bells. You don't notice the sound of the water draining away. You only notice it when the thing appears beside you. Some eerie psionic ability that renders it into shadow. It drops it in order to strike. 
a monstrous coiled thing, its body some 40 feet in length. Glad it's small, thanks. There's a picture of it in roll 20. Chitin plated all down the length of its body. And it's it's two feet across, this thing. Bruh. And it <laughs> rears up, fangs dripping. Behind it, you can see where you had carefully stacked the, uh, the remaining water. The pots are broken. The water inside drained away. You can just catch beads of moisture around the side of its mouth, just as it <laughs> strikes at you. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh. <laughs> that hits armor class 18. Before I roll damage, can I have a saving throw against poison, please, as the thing's uh -huh. monstrous fangs sink into you? All Bye, right. dude. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, <laughs> bye now. Bye bye. All right, wait a minute. Bye roll, bye uh, roll twenty or yeah, roll d twenty, please. Imagine if you had full poor tech on that heel. Yay! A nineteen. That would have been bad. A nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Um, you pull yourself back in time, just oh. as the thing begins to chew, starts to chew down. Its venom fails to inject into your body, but as you yank away, it rips a great chunk of muscle off your arm. You take six damage. Oh, like the thank uh, you for it in advance dead, for healing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be worse. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Turns it's out. It's a flesh wound. <laughs> it's, your arm's like you're lucky. No, it isn't. Mm. Uh, does any of this wake us? Uh, he would probably uh, call out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say he'd probably be like, hey, um, guys, if you're so inclined. Um... Hey, guys. Okay. Would, would, if, Constantine, would just first, can you roll initiative, please? I presume you shout to wake the others, but in the meantime, you get around uh, on your own. A three. That's fine. I got a nine, which is modified to a 15 because of the thing's size. So you go first. Great. First off, I'm going to uh, scream everyone up now. Yep. And uh, I'm assuming this thing's still staring me right in the face. Oh, yeah. It's looming over you now. Uh, yeah. I'm going to attempt to... Uh, take my short swords and uh, stab it through the uh, underside of its jaw. Okay. It's armor class 17. Thanks. Uh, first weapon will be a six. Okay. <laughs> the blade just boom, bounces off the chitin. And the jaw. second roll will be a nat 20. <laughs> Whoa! And then oh, I will take the nat 20. Them. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> if you do max damage, the weapon breaks. Otherwise, roll. I, I am not doing max damage. We okay. do not have an abundance of dam of, of weapons laying around. Actually, I think we do. Uh, five. Five. What if he rolls max damage? Does it still break? Then, 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 then there's a one in twenty chance it breaks. Oh, okay. Um, the rest of you wake to see Constantine with one obsidian sword buried up to its hilt in the jaw of a monstrous serpent that's kind of flailing around, blood spraying all over the place. Initiative from everyone, please. Oh no. Um, it's a, is it a D10 plus yeah. your speed? D10 right? plus the speed of Lower whatever, the whatever you're doing. Okay, you all um, ready, Vangal? Okay. Um, the so I'm just speed... getting initiative off you now, please. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a two. Two plus. What's the speed of this? Singing, so singing sticks. Four. I think is. Yeah, four. So four in total. Yeah. Okay, Bengal on four. Constantine. You're muted. muted. So you're moody, muted. Mime it. No, I wasn't. You're just deaf, okay? Um, all of you at once. Um, it's a six. A six. Uh, okay, uh, Matthias? I rolled maximum to 11. 11? Nissa? Good. Eight. Uh, Portek? Three plus six is nine. It is indeed. And Ra. 11 as well. 11. Okay, uh, Bengal Bengal. Yes. Um, right, so I've just woken up. <laughs> no I don't way. know what the... 
I'm like, what? Oh, what's going on? But um, I'm gonna. I guess I see Constantine sort of like with his hand practically buried in the sky's. Yep. Um, can I possibly climb up its back to sort of get to its head and like use my singing sticks like one like two at a time to just sort of like try and hack into my yeah 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 try and hack into its head yeah absolutely chill i i your, vision singing your acrobatic, sticks like your acrobatic drumming. skill is sufficient that you don't need to to, to roll for that so you go scampering up its back on the kite in position yourself and then wah, 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 wah. okay what, what are singing sticks i just envision them as like drumsticks <laughs> Um, there's pictures of them in the campaign guide, but they're oh, okay. a particular form of stick that's used for really rapid physical attacks. They're great weapons, actually. Oh, okay. They're awesome. Uh, they, break, they break the rules on two-weapon fighting. It's quite nice. D20? Yeah, twice. Okay, okay I got an 18 um, and a 13. Both hit. Okay. D6 plus 5. No, sorry, D6 plus 4. Sorry, D4 plus 5 with each. D4 plus 5, so 2D4 plus 5 each. 2D4 plus 10, yeah. Right. Okay, so that is 3, 4, and then plus 10. So that's like 14. Yeah, 17. 14. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. Okay, 17. Don't listen to me. I'm bad at maths. You know this. Okay, uh, uh, top the, the the top of the thing's head, uh, Bengal Bengal cracks twice with his singing sticks. You see the thing's skull kiting actually split open, and pale runny green fluid starts to spill down the side of his head. Uh, that's a pretty brutal injury. Constantine. Uh, at this point, I think I'm going to just take that uh, sword that's already in its uh, in its jaw. Um, come hacking down on it again right by the jawline while pushing the other sword forward just kind of i just want to keep that damage going i'm gonna go for it. its job and so uh 16 and an 18. okay the 16 is a miss the 18 is a hit okay that's a three on damage okay You drive the sword deeper into its jaw. You can kind of feel it coughing and juddering. And green fluid spills out of its mouth, runs down your arm, across your upper body. Nissa. Okay, um, do I know the fact that... Um... Oh, no, never, never mind. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, I'm going to project force against the, the creature's skull. Yep. Um... That's a 15 plus 4 is a 19 on the power check. Yep. And uh, maximum damage, 6. Nice. Okay, skull swings sideways as uh, your psychic power slams psychokinetic force into it. Portek. I stab at it with my spear. Go for it. And I roll a 19. The hit! Yes. Roll damage. That's be eight. It's large, presumably. Yep. <laughs> if uh, if that... it's not large, then we've got a problem. <laughs> uh... Give me three. Give me six. Seven. Plus. Nine. And then it's because it's a... obsidian, it's minus one, right? Yep. Uh, eight, eight points of damage. Okay, with all of you surrounding it, stabbing and thrusting, the thing is taking some fairly serious damage. It starts to go into a flailing frenzy. Its tail whips sideways. Striking at... Portek with a hit. Uh, Nissa with a miss. Ra with a hit. Portek and Ra, you both take two points of buffeting damage. Nothing particularly heavy as its tail swings sideways. Uh, that Portek. Would, would be half in half by me, right? With me. I believe. Why? The blunt damage uh, halves my damage. Uh, is, is half damage for me. You're quite right. Yes. Uh, 16 you're on. And Ra, you go down to 
47. Um, and it turns its head upwards, um, can't quite manage to get a, a bite on the halfling that's in front of it, so lunges forward toward Constantine once more. Constantine, another save against poison, please. And you take another, got oh, six damage. You're really getting your money's worth today, Constantine. 16 on the, uh, the save. Uh, that's a save. Again, it can't get its poison into you, but your hit points are now down to 16. And Matthias and Portek, you're both up. Welcome to my level. Uh, what's the action of applying the poison, Mark? Uh, that would be a move action. Um, so um, am I, I really close by you, you, it's uh, Porta, you and Matthias at the same time. I already had my turn just I now, think, right? Or I not? Think, this is a new I, round. Oh, sorry, uh, it's Ra. Sorry, yeah, Ra. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think you mean me. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll let Ra go first, but while I'm you, thinking you have, about it. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you have better decks, so it's really up to you if you want to go first um, or not. So, uh, can I obviously apply it and, ha and attack it then, yeah? Uh, you need to throw it because you, you don't get to move up to it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay, I'll apply it to a dagger and throw the dagger. Okay. I can throw two daggers. So can I only apply it to one dagger? No. So I can oh, apply it to both. Of, yeah. Plenty of... You apply it to one dagger. Oh, that's what I said. Can I only apply it to one? You went, nope. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I just okay. automatically say no. So the first... Nope. No, can't do that. I can throw nope. two no, daggers. No, no, no. So no. the first one... The first one's got a poison, and that is yeah. a... 18 to hit? Is that yeah, but that's a hit. Um, and that is a D3 plus two. So it's only f three points of damage, but obviously it's got a poison save. Uh, Fails against, it save. Okay, so failed save takes instantly 30. It's instant 30. Instant. Uh, it says onset time one to two minutes. So one, one D2. Okay, so uh, Romeo D4. Uh, D4... And that is a one on a dice. Okay, so it'll take one round. Poison, oh, okay. will, poison will take effect next round. And then I throw the other dagger. That's probably going to be a miss. Seven on a dice. That's going to be a miss. Yeah, it's got armor class 17. Okay, Ra. Uh, the, uh, the, other, the other blade has sunk nicely in between, the, between its chitin plates. And I stay where I am. <laughs> I uh, pick up my sword and I... Uh, try and slice down onto it, feeling its movement through the vibrations with a 26 to hit. Jesus Christ! <laughs> she um, has plus 30 to attack. <laughs> um, and then I have... Uh, damage is, with a, a, a two-handed bar yes. sword. It's, it's 2d8 damage. Oh, it's 2d8 oh. damage. Okay. Yep. I rolled it wrong last time because I was going through... Uh, I was going with... Um, That's fine. The thingamabob. Um, two D. Do I get any pluses to it, or just two D? You get your, your strength plus. Epic. So that is um, which I think is yep. Okay, so that is a sixteen uh, damage. <laughs> okay, down to fifteen because it's obsidian. But the thing only had six hit points left. Um, so <laughs> in half. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it I should have let her Bengal, go Bengal, you, you are suddenly falling as you realize that Ra has taken the thing's head clean off. It's just like that time during the Zanalia Championships last year. Oh my god. But you tumble from the thing's head, green silkworm blood spreading out. Ra, how many times what? do we have to have this conversation? I, I, I try to make, make sure that the enemy. <laughs> try to make sure that we don't lose uh, 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 too many fluids. Yeah. She's just like, Ra, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to knock you off. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do anything bad. Is it over? Is it over? Are we okay? It's over. So, oh, cut its head off. Hold, holding himself, stands and be like, it crushed the water, and. Oh. And he's gonna go over to it now. I'm gonna use my my animal lore and start um, dissecting it, seeing what we could take from it. What's useful? Can we drink its blood? You know that sort of I stuff. Need, I need okay. to poison. Poison. The, uh, the water was only just drunk. We should be able maybe to retrieve it from its uh, gullet. Well, with his animal lore, Constantine can tell you what a brief set of slices with the dagger will reveal. 
that uh, once in its gullet, the water is befouled, because that's not the only thing that's in there. There's a body in there, partly decomposed. In fact, almost entirely wrapped in silk. This, uh, anything it ate, anything it's in it. Looks to have been a, an elf, perhaps. Uh, half buried beneath the acid rotted remnants of its chitin armor is a shriveled potion fruit. Nice. Oh, Nissa, is this the creature with the poison that you've been trying to teach me? Yeah, it's a silkworm. Oh. It has a powerful paralytic poison. With, uh, with the animal law proficiency, um, you can harvest a dose of the poison. Uh, Constantine also knows that these things paralyze their prey, carry them away to a lair, entomb them in silk, and then drain their blood, and then finally eat them. So that it's probably got a lair somewhere nearby, um, but they have a great scent for water. So it might well have been following you during the... Uh, if you've been traveling during the day, you could probably have seen it, actually, in the air. But at night time, it's, uh, it's, yeah, they fly. Right. So this has probably been following us pretty efficiently. It may have a nest, may have been following everything, and it is basically useless. Um, can we eat the? The question is, can we? Uh, can we eat the meat? Can we cook it? You can eat the meat, yes. And the chitin itself, it makes very good armor. I was going to uh, say, so can we skin we it have, and use the? As I say, it's, yeah. um, it's valuable, yeah. Uh, has has there, good yes. armor. Good armor. Um, we can eat the meat, so we'll be. Uh, have be enough sustenance. for all of us. It's, it's forty foot Easily. long, Easily so I feel enough. like we're okay. <laughs> yeah. Half of the so can we can we, uh, can we get the the silk from the the cocoon? Can we uh, salvage that? The, what, the great... stuff that the, the stuff that's been eaten, a small amount. Okay. Not uh, much, but a little. Okay. So how do we yeah. harvest the poison, Mark? You use animal lore. Oh, I, at this point, um, a very bloodied and, and beaten to hell uh, Stan is basically doing what he did before, just piecemealing everything out, cutting down the food, stripping off the okay. chitin. He's doing all okay. that while you guys are having conversations and such. He's just working. No, yeah, um, am, I, am I able to yeah. aid in that with my my armor craft? As, uh, yeah, it'll take you a while to build the armor out of it, but you've, you've got uh, a considerable amount of silkworm chitin. Um, you've got uh, two doses of uh, silkworm poison. Nice. And you have, say, oh, I don't know, um, maybe five silver pieces, so that's 50 ceramic pieces worth of silk out of it. Well, Matthias would be sitting the, there uh, watching the, you. You said there was a fruit, so um, I would give... And yeah, uh, this, this elf had a potion. So, yeah, I would give it to uh, Portek. Um, give that to Portek right away for holding and safekeeping. Yeah. Um, if I notice that uh, Math Matthias is uh, watching what I'm doing, I'll start turning my back to him. And, and just, I, don't, <laughs> I don't trust this guy. I don't know who the fuck he is. I'm just trying to learn, you know. I'm interested in learning I mean, what you're doing. Oh, well, first you skin the thing like this. Well, and she just like... <laughs> just I can't goes. see now. He's turned his back, so, you know. I, I, I almost picture like... You know how you, when you when you see people do this, where they literally pull the skin off like a sock. Yeah. <laughs> like I picture, I picture Raj just doing that, just picking up the whole thing. <laughs> I pretty, pretty much. Please tell me that while she's going first, you skin it like this. Please tell me she has her blade in her hand and it's just wildly flailing. So I say, uh, can we can we take the poison? I think this will we can do something with it, and so can I. You like poison, don't you? It's part of my trade. Yes. Do you make it and sell it? I do, yes. This is. Well, hold uh, on, hold on. What trade would that be? I'm a bard. Ah. Well. And a warrior. That yeah. explains I'm, a lot. What explains mm -hmm. what? What your trade is. Have you wrote songs about mine and Bengal's uh, uh, gladiator fights? No, I don't sing. He's not a singer. He's a killer. Well, aren't we all? Yeah, but oh, I do it. I, I do it because I have to. You, you do know? it for fun and for. <laughs> we do it for sport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is a competitive sport, man. I, I do it to survive, to pay to to pay for my living. Um, I don't just yeah. kill people like uh, everyone else here. It also kills people, don't we not? I perform. I, I don't. I don't kill people. 
No. All I'm saying is, all. Matthias, pretty convenient that we've got a bard amongst us, Isn't and it? our lady is freshly dead. Isn't it just? You know, that is a good point. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very good yeah. point. <laughs> it's anyway, really sad. The poison. I, it's worth yeah. a lot of money. We could sell it. Or we could use it. Very good. Portek pulled this poison. It could be sold. I just found out that it might be valuable. Oh, it is. Uh, <clears throat> let the bard please handle that. Hmm. I'm not handling that uh, poison. And, and he'll just put it to the side. Like, I'm not handing it to him here. Poison dwarf, for your you, trade. Can you, uh, dwarf, roll me a d20, please? Yes, please do, dwarf. <laughs> Don't foul. 16. Perfect, that's fine. You might want to be careful handling that. Okay. If you don't know what to, what to do with poison, you might not want to handle poison. At least he's dangerous. a little bit tense, you know. We're not sure if he's going to turn around and attack one of us or, uh, you know, who, who knows. He's a bit tense. Well, look, some general. people might deserve that, so maybe you shush. Okay. I walk to uh, Constantine. I'll make sure say, nobody dies. Doesn't mean I have to save you, it just means I'll make sure you don't die. Thank you. Um, Whatever you do on your own, I can't protect you from yourself. While we're and on the go subject, right back to working. Yeah. <laughs> While we're on the subject, uh, uh, Constantine, I think you need some healing after this little battle with the with the worm. Um, I won't tell you now. I will uh, proceed to, in throwing him uh, first healing after. Uh, Brief prayer with my uh, amethyst uh, medallion. Okay. Uh, it's a five, and the second one, another five. Okay, very good. I'm going to skin the snake. Just be like, ah, there we go. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you had that prop ready. <laughs> I actually reached over into the drawer. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else about the the, the elf that we uh, could discern? Could we discern what kind of tribe he's from, which tribe he was from? Juradai. Juradai. The ones who, who attacked the caravan. Did he have any uh, name markings or significant uh, recognizable jewelry on or something? I... Let me have a look. You don't have heraldry, so you know you you're not sure. Or any, anything what that might uh, be recognizable on him that might be recognized by other Juradai than... Uh... Yeah, nothing that you could... I mean, yeah, trinkets and feathers and beads and bits of bone and stuff, just usual... I'll collect desert, it and take it along. Desert elf crap, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the water is gone. It is what it is. We have one more day ahead of us, right? And hopefully then you will find Cled. What's my assessment uh, on uh, Ra? Will uh, she make that one day? Yes. Okay. Good. And so you set off. Yeah. We'll get it out of the way. Ra, can you roll me a d6, please? Me? Okay. Uh, a five. Okay, so you lose five points of constitution from dehydration. Oh! Permanently? Until you rehydrate, yes. She will occurs. And if you hit zero, you're dead, right? Yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, and I make that two hit points per die. Um, which for you is six dice, okay. twelve. So, and your hit, your maximum hit point total goes down by twelve to uh, thirty-seven, and drops your current down to thirty-five. Still twice as many as me. <laughs> so yeah, she'll survive. <laughs> She's like walking, but she's kind of like her peppy kind of stuff is now like a kind of slow. She's like, <sighs> you've never had to experience this out in the depths of the desert. Lips cracked, 
throat dry, sweat drying at the corner of your eyes, in the corners of your joints, tongue swelling in your mouth, and a constant, growing, pulsing headache. Matthias. Yes. Can you roll me a d6, please? Four. So that's four points of con for you. That puts you on nine. Which for you is only uh, two hit point loss. Fifteen. The rest of us are doing water find? The rest yes. of you, give me those water find roll, please. You hope. Viewers <laughs> cannot donate water, Panda, no. <laughs> please. I was like, worth a try, worth a try. <laughs> okay. Viewers can donate water. Well, if they donate you enough healing potions, they might get you actually here through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No, uh, healing doesn't heal, heal constitution. The gal, the gal. Um, I got twelve. You got a twelve. That's a fail. Is it? I thought my water find was fourteen. Yeah, but there's a minus three because you're in a particularly inhospitable uh, uh, environment. Oh. Me, me. Okay. Um, Constantine, water find, please. Ra's just walking like I miss being a slave. <laughs> <laughs> I miss being 18. 18. Likewise, a fail. Nissa. Come on, I guys. A, I, ro I rolled a two. That's a pass. Uh, Portek. Nine. A pass. Okay. Um, Bengal, Bengal, and Constantine. D6s, please. Oh. Five. Two. Five and a two. Okay. Is there any point in doing heat protection? No, because you, you're not in the heat, you're traveling at night. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Well, what if, it, what if, what if I'm still warm? And man? Constantine, a two, right? Five and a two, yeah. What does that mean? I'll be with you in just a second. I'm just doing some numbers. Am I going to die? Is it over? Uh, two points, uh, six, uh, six off. I don't like this game anymore. I want to go home. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Um, likewise, heat, exposure, parched tongues, split lips. Bengal, Bengal, your hit point total drops down to 20. Uh, what, forever? No, until you get rehydrated. Okay. Constantine, uh, 27. Uh, your current state is 20. Okay. You guys, ha the, the the small amount that you had has prevented it from being d8s instead of d6s. By the way. At any rate, all of you now are beginning to feel the loss of the water caused feel... by the uh, the depredations of the silkworm. I almost feel bad having succeeded in my role because now I'm sitting there like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing, sharing this rock cactus with anyone. Well, yeah. I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> they, almost, they must all be like staring at her while she's. Fi I found one, guys. We're like just dying, and you're like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about me. Through the night, you stumble. I, yeah. Glad of the protection of the stars, fearful of what the next day will bring if somehow you have become lost on this route and that Cled isn't waiting for you just over the next dune. <sighs> and yet, as dawn threatens on your final day of travel, you emerge from one of the canyons in the rocky badlands to see ahead of you 
the dark brown waters and towering yeeper trees of an oasis. Okay, but is it a real oasis this time or is it an ugly little plant monster again? Portek looks looks really happy. We don't know. Portek, you recognize it. Yes. It's Kled's oasis. Oh, okay. The strange tear shape and in fact, there's the little bridge, an ancient stone monument at the side. A relic of bygone ages. And, uh, this is this is Kled's water supply. We made it, guys. Why is it brown? It's you care at this point? That's the color I'm, it always I, is. Listen, man, I'm just asking. Just putting it out there. No one else finds it weird that water is brown around here? No? Just okay, Dirty fine. water. What's brown? Don't worry, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a quick overview of what you're seeing. Indeed, by the side of the oasis, a mechanot lies dead, half buried in the sand. Surely it must be dead. It has a pair of kestrakels on its head, pecking at its empty eye socket. Also that, and it says dead mechalot. It says dead mechalot. Someone's yeah, written that. Although, you, you, although that's <laughs> literally is, literacy is illegal, so you can't read that. <laughs> right, yeah. So I lose but... 500 XP. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, they, they've written that down for the, for the half giants among us, so that they know that it's dead. I can't, I, I'm blind, I can't. Dra dragging it around. Uh, it's not a, it's it's not alone either. Comes into view as you uh just round the edge of the oasis. A living one is next to it. And it rears its head and gives a low <laughs> in your direction as it hears your approach. Hey. You know, from some of the scorching on their backs these are probably the mechalots that went lumbering away from the caravan a couple of days ago. Right. Oh my god, it all connects. I love that. I love it. Are you telling us that the mechalots were faster than us? Yeah, by the way. They, went in, a straight, the they went in a straight line. You guys were wandering <laughs> off up into the hills. If someone and didn't look we were, for a map. And, and <laughs> if you recall, you guys have been going half speed. Yes. Uh, looking and for they, they went straight for the water. They went straight for the water. Yeah. One of them didn't make it, so that I say our plan was better. Well, that's... Yeah, why didn't it make it? Does it look dehydrated? It's it next to water. It looks what, what, dead. Yeah. Well, I, mean, what, I wouldn't know what, what a dehydrated mechalot looks like anyway, so... It's like a normal mechalot, but its face looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I needed nightmares, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd taken a photo of that. Frame it. We, we, yeah, don't, we, like, like, we got the we got the vod. We got the vod. It's true, okay. we've got the vod. <laughs> Reserved on the that. internet forever. Meme. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Meme coming up. <laughs> so, okay. um, Mark, with my animal lord, would I know um, the habits of these creatures? Are they are they over are they aggressive? Will we be attacked if we? Yeah, approach? I have animal lore as well. The, yeah, they can be aggressive. Yes. Um, yes, they're not very bright, and if they think they're defending something, um, they will. Uh, they will like fight their dead companion. Yes. Well, guys, if we go near that water, chances are that one's going to try to kill us. Well, let's, um, let's go around them. Friend. I have a... Give him a wide berth and go around. No. no. Yeah, but there could be useful parts to that. And to I'd rather get you the water, to be honest. I would rather drink something. Yes. Yes, me too. I am in agreement. All right, let's... You, you were the ones who kept I... saying, oh, we could sell this, we could sell that. I will, I will, ah, I will go... Oh, oh, oh. I will go to the Mechalot and cast an animal friendship on it. Okay. Oh my god. Well, we, we eat its companion. Speech, it's a <laughs> low rumbling in its throat. You can feel it through the desert sand beneath your feet. Mm -hmm. And then the power of the cosmos reaches from your mind to its and beguiles it in a moment of friendship. And it lowers its head towards you and 
puffs a greeting onto the sand mm. and looks at you with enormous soft brown eyes. Mm. I, I approach it and I emulate the, the, the gesture um, as much as I can and then I... It nudges like, you and it's only, uh, only your kind of stout dwarven uh, spread on the, on the ground that stops you from being knocked flat by its snout. But, <laughs> yeah. and, and then I it gives a plane to... On the head, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know. It looks over toward its dead mate. Yeah, mm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at its sadness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's an asshole. I, I, I see how the two of you work oh, together God. on this whole murder thing. You know? I, I mean, I knew I knew we were traveling with murderers. I didn't realize we were traveling with dicks. But we didn't know we murdered anyone. <laughs> Nissa starts laughing. Ra, who can't even see or knows anything, just looks down. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when this gentle soul is telling you that, as she smashes people to a pulp and cuts them in half without thinking, <laughs> how dare you? How dare? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You heartless, heartless elf. Okay, so what are you guys doing? Um, where is Cled? So Cled would be um, uh, about four or five miles to the west of here. There's yep. a, 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 a canyon spills out onto the desert here. So this is not Cled. This is just their water supply. This is their water supply. Yeah. yeah. This is the oasis near Cled. Yeah. Okay. So, can we go towards the like the monumental arch bit and then and be away from these mechalots and get drink oh, our the, fill? The mechalot is our friend now. Cool. Um, <coughs> let's drink some water. I think that's a good plan. Yeah. I want to drink. I look <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm drink still I'm still wondering what what like this that. this this other mechalot is why it's dead. I'm not really. Can you ask your new friend? I can't talk with it. I just make it friends. <laughs> oh. It's our friend now. Yeah. Can I okay. use a hunter to see if I can determine the cause of death? I don't know if it works that way, but animal I feel lore. like animal lore would work. Yeah, that. animal like, lore would work. Yeah, give me a roll, please. Yeah. Also, to your brain, you're oddly blurry, uh, or you were blurry. Yeah, oh, no, not. Was that a fifteen? Fifteen. One five. That's an excellent roll. Okay, um, so oh, Nissi, okay. Yeah, you, you, you've already you've already headed down to the water. Um, Constantine, you're over looking at the uh, the, the dead mechalot. Um, the the live one kind of grumbles a bit, but poor Tech, you're able able to soothe it. And the, the discoloration around its mouth, this kind of strange purple mottling, uh, the the dried froth. You're almost certain this thing has been poisoned. Uh, so uh, Constantine's going to turn around and go. Don't drink the water yet. This one's been poisoned. Oh. Uh oh. Can I tell if the water's been poisoned? I do an observation, yeah. It I doesn't... will... Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go, Karen. I was just going to say, uh, Ra would head over um, and to where Portek is next to the live one. Um, and she'll, she'll kind of try and follow the noise of its, like, mo its moaning. And yeah. she'll come over, and if possible, may I try my empathy on it? Yes, absolutely. I want to see if it's still thirsty, like maybe it knows that it can't drink it or something. Yes, roll me d20, please. Uh, 14. Uh, and that's a reptile, which is a minus four, which is exactly what you need. Okay. Um... Your mind reaches out to its mind. Deep within its simple reptilian brain, a combination of yearning. That's the most potent emotion. Yearning for the life of its companion, but yes, also yearning for water that it knows it cannot drink. She begins to kind of stroke the the head of the the creature um yes it, it, it this it, this one also knows it can't drink from the water i think it can tell it's bad it grumbles low in its belly portek looking around over by the monumental arch 
you spot two things that are unusual. Underneath there are bundles of food and fruit and dried meats that have rotted and gone bad. You recall that the Dwarves of Cled leave these here as an offering for the Druid of the Oasis. And the Druid's not here. Secondly, on the bridge itself, there are um, stems and twigs with a kind of vague purplish hue to them. No leaves, as if the leaves have been stripped off and the twigs and stems discarded. Um, I point that out to uh, Constantine. Do you know what those plants are? Where the, 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 the leaves are stripped off? Uh, Constantine will walk over and start taking a look. I'll join him. Can I do any yep. poison roll? Do you have herbalism? No, not yet. I I no, do. So only people, this is her herbal or survival uh, mountains. So poisons is just like get the ability to use them and not. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fourteen, Mark. Yourself. Fourteen. I yeah, Anissa. I rolled a five on the herbalism check, and I know my poisons as well. This is almost certainly methelenoc. Okay. It is one of the most potent poisons known. It's a herb that grows only in the Ringing Mountains. The, st the stems and twigs are. Um, uh, are not toxic, the leaves will kill you. So I relay this. Uh, Interestingly yeah. enough, it doesn't affect canks and it doesn't affect elves. Have I heard of this poison before? Yeah, sure. Hmm. Will you tell us about this? Uh, yeah, um, Methylock, it's... If you want to die, just stick your tongue in for two seconds. It'll pretty much destroy you. The leaves are highly, highly poisonous. And ingested, although those sticks poison, are fine. Right? It's ingested. Poison, yeah, yes. ingested only, I believe. Um, at least as much as I know. It is, yes. But um, it doesn't affect elves, uh, which is very pertinent to our current situation or recent situation. Only elves. Or Kanks. Doesn't affect elves yep. or Kanks. Uh, so I'll, I'll say out of... Remember, he's not in his entire mind, so yeah, I yeah, actually yeah. do... I do omit information. <laughs> That's fine. I apologize. Uh, yeah, so uh, elves that I recall uh, could be uh, more, but it it escapes me right now. If anything, the uh, elves probably poison the well. This, uh, this they're, they're the ones using this poison normally. No, but they're the only one that can survive it, meaning the water's still good to them. Yeah, but they don't have access to this water necessarily. We don't know that. Doesn't make sense. Let's go and ask ask uh, in Cled what's going on here. They will know. There are voices water. Uh, coming your way. Young, chattering voices. And in fact, uh, rounding the corner of the edge of the canyon and uh, heading in the direction of uh, the oasis um are these guys oh halflings we slaughtered them <laughs> they're dwarves okay. <laughs> that one has hair some do especially the Most ones. Don't. Yeah, especially when they're drawn by baxa um A gaggle of young dwarves chattering and laughing and they kind of grind to a bit of a halt when they see your uh, bloody sand swept crudely armed and armored group standing around the, the monumental arch you can see they're carrying what appear to be empty containers and a couple have um, have uh, bundles of something food you're not sure um I, I approach them and, 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 and greet them. They know me. Well, how long have you been living in Uruk? I've been there for maybe a year. Okay. So some of them may recognize you. Yeah. One steps forward. 
Is your name is your name Portek? He says. That's correct. Him. And who are you? Cla- Cleodis. You're you're Samuel's son, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I remember you. You were a little bit smaller when last I uh, was here. No, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you were. No, I wasn't. Okay. I wasn't. Hey. He looks over hey. his shoulder at the others. I wasn't. Guys, do not drink the water. It's poisoned. No, we've we've brought we 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 brought the candied the candied eggs for the druid. Um. Then then look, he he keeps the water safe. Yeah, look at look at the the stuff which was, which was brought last time. It's still hanging from the bridge. He didn't take it. Well, this is nice. He like this. No, um, look, he, he the didn't water take it. Is brown. So he's probably not around at the moment. Oh. And the water is poisoned. It's brown. How do you, how do you know? Did you poison it? No. Look, the kank died from it, and the other kank. <laughs> They're mechalots, stupid. <laughs> uh, mechalots, you know what I mean. Well, look, there's no water left in town. Yes, there's a problem well, then. I, I, we came to get some. My, we need to solve on, this. Uh, I'm going to go put the candied eggs under the bridge for the druid. You better take them uh, along back to uh, to Cled. You, you're not the boss of me. No, he I'm kind not. Of elbows past you. It'll be fine. The druid will know what to do. And he kind of goes trudges his way through some of the mud that's around the edge of the uh, of the um, uh, the oasis and bends down. And you can he's like you can actually see him hold his nose. Oh, oh! As uh, as, well, as you're quite right, the um, uh, the, the the food that's been left there has uh, has thoroughly rotted at that point. Um, anyway, um, the mud parts quite near him, and an immense serpentine form comes surging up from out of the water, spreads. There's a picture of it here. Um, it's not like a silkworm size or anything, um, but it's a good 10 to 15 feet long. And around its neck, <laughs> a huge fan of colored scales uh, expands. Uh, it lunges forward and... Oh, yes, yeah, seizes Cleodis and drags him back beneath the mud with a muffled shriek that's <laughs> cut off as he disappears into the slime. So, Cled, then. <laughs> That kid's a dick. Let's leave him to die. Miss right? Matthias, a lovely bear. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a really nice guy. He's just this is just his job. <laughs> oh bugger! Guess we go now. <laughs> um, uh, cool. Um, can I just, uh, out of pure curiosity, would I have been able to have found anything to kind of leash around this this creature? To in the, in the hopes of maybe bringing it with us. Can we? Can we? Yeah, actually... there there will have been parts of uh, of the uh, just uh, she she's been busy while you've been talking to a little boy. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, no, no, this this is this is like while this this was like while this was going on. Like I don't I, like I completely get. We're there at Willy be, Wonka's Chocolate Factory of... and Augustus Bloop has gone, but <laughs> <laughs> can I do anything right now? <laughs> there will totally uh, have been fragments of the of the harness that held the Mechalots attached to the Argosy, um, so you could indeed probably fashion a very crude uh, harness or leash out of that, okay. yes. I've decided so, I don't uh, like just to be clear, and... this, this, this massive serpent came out of the mud and ate this... It dragged him back beneath the mud. Yes. And and we're just all standing around, kind of going like, oh well, I guess that. No, just we're not. Then. No, we're not standing no. around. No, no okay. I'm, sure. I'm assuming that was uh, out of character. That of was character. out of character. Okay. Okay. James Jakery. Uh, sorry, sorry. What part was out of character? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh well. I take it from uh, from Carl's uh, expression that he, well, he, pull, he pulls his something. swords and then he says, "That's it, Cled." <laughs> 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 He's a lovable rogue, all right. It's not like the dwarven race is dying out. You know, we we can afford to lose a child or two. It's not a big deal. Did yeah. So, uh, what, what did you want to do? That dragged him out. Um, I immediately um, react and 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 go after it with my spear. 
Okay. Um, okay. You, oh, yeah, like plodge, kind of knee deep up through the mud. Um, you can see where the uh, the mound of the creature is burrowing down um, into the slime. You may, of course, take a stab at it if you wish. Yeah. I will, uh, yeah, I'll take a stab at it and make sure that it sticks so that we can drag it back out. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, in that case, make me a CMB check, please. Uh, in your case, I've got the numbers here. Just roll me a d20. Uh, 16. 16, uh, which goes up to an 18, which is enough uh, by four points, actually. Um, you stab down, hook the spear under the uh, under the edge of its, uh, of, of, of its scales at the back and brace yourself against the mud. Uh, hold fast. The spear bends in your in your hand as the thing pulls against you. You are, for the time being, at least holding it. Um, if Cleodus can hold his breath for this long, who knows? Um, but your stout dwarven limbs pushed into the mud. You're holding it in place. Help me! I did say I pulled my weapons, so yeah. Anything from anyone else? Yeah, I'll slash the yeah. creature. Um, okay. can I... I don't think I'd be able to do much help, but can I go and try and help Vortex sort of, you know, hold this thing? Help Brace. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Bengal, Bengal, roll d20 for me, please. I am such a small little man, but I will do my best. <laughs> uh, I got a 14. A 14 uh, plus... Does count as unarmed, I suppose. Um, y- you have braced yourself against far larger opponents than this, and uh, you show Portek, here, spread your legs this way. We need to, and we'll just have a quick recap. Um, okay, so uh, the, the Kluzd, for that's what the, the, the name of the giant serpent is, has taken the poor likable dwarven boy and dragon, dragged him beneath the mud. Um, Portek has leapt to his aid, and with Bengal Bengal's help, has jammed a spear into the serpent's back, holding it in place. Um, Matthias uh, went running over, yeah. crashed his PC in the process, but nevertheless stands ready to, uh, uh, to aid. So um, uh, why don't we have uh, our final initiative roll of the session? This snake isn't going to last long, to be honest, but we might as well give it a good send-off. Um, um, so remember, uh, stand still uh, stands over there in defensive position. Yes, just that's in case right. the snake comes back towards all these wonderful people. Okay, initiative, please, guys. Six. Oh, yes! Sorry. Oh no! Wait, seven. Sorry, <laughs> not six. It's seven. Okay, um, that was a seven there. For I got a one Ra. and one, so that puts you up to a three, uh, Bengal. Yeah, uh, Constantine. Four. A four. Modifier Matthias. already applied. Yeah. Yeah. Matthias. Three total. Well, you guys are on fire. Uh, Nissa. Ten. Ten. Not so much on fire. Yeah. Smoldering and Portek. Um, I have three, um, and depends on what happens in the round. Um, I, I would like, as soon as I get the opportunity and uh, it's being held in place or it's dead, that I immediately uh, take the moment to rescue the little dwarf from its fangs. To get him out. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, as it happens, Bengal, Matthias, and Portek, you're all up on a three. So, um, if you want to pull it out, that's going to take a CMB check. So. Um, Portek, give me a roll for that, please. You've held it in place and now uh, begin to exert your strength to heave the thing out of the mud. 17. Nice. Okay. Um, Bengal, can you roll as well to assist? Uh, D20? Yep. Um, that's in 16. Okay. Together, you put your dwarven and halfling endurance and strength into it. Pull back on the spear and with an immense sucking noise and it's not the only thing that sucks about this encounter the claws is pulled out of the mud clenched within its jaws coughing up mud and blood is young Cleodis he appears to actually still be alive we do not want that kind of music thank you we want this kind of music does he ingest the poison? <laughs> okay, um, you pulled it out of the mud. It lets go of Cleodis. Uh, Matthias, any actions from you? Yeah, I'm going to slash it twice. Okay. I rolled an 18 and a 13. 
And the 13 okay. would be plus... This armor class is uh, 18. Uh, okay, so one would hit, uh, and the other one would be a 13 plus... I think it's four, so seven, 17, so one will miss. Okay. Um, and that is... Nine damage. Nice. And I will okay. roll my blades from the front line, and everyone else has plus one to hit. Okay, so you let let loose a, a fancy display of uh, of of, is of blade the front skill. Fighting? So it's just in, it's inspiring leader. So everyone else just gets plus one to hit. Okay, yeah, this is a, a class feature that um, that Matthias has because he's right up front, demonstrating good leadership. Everybody else who's in melee with the closed gets a plus one to hit. Yeah. Okay. Um, the closed, attracted perhaps by your whirling blades, blah, spits the boy out and lunges forward, jaws striking for you. And that was my inspiration. It's a hit. I did actually announce it in chat, by the way, that I was doing this. Uh, Mark, was that in any way, uh, is he near um, Stan at all, who's defensively uh, standing there? Yes, he is. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Stan's stupid, so he's probably going to try to you know, use his death parry to keep that snake from eating oh. these people. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's a wall. He is indeed a wall. Let me just double check on death parry for you. A very damaged, broken wall. That's just physical. Okay. Um, where the heck is Deft Parry? There it is. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. Give me a. Uh, give me a roll for that, please. That's a 17. I think I get a plus two because of the death parry. Is that it? Yes, that makes it a 19. Um, so you are, you both blades up in a cross form underneath the thing's neck. It is unable to get past um, the barrier you've made. You save Matthias from being struck by the thing. You waste my inspiration into the boot. <laughs> For this, you will pay. But. I paid enough already. Have you not seen this <laughs> well, session? Okay, the, 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 the balance is settled then. I think. Alrighty, um, and Ra. That's me. Um, I uh, charge over and with the sword, just try and slash down onto it um, with the plus one. That is a twenty-four to hit. Whoa. Um, and that is uh, twenty-two. It counts, as, count, counts as medium, by the way. So it's it's. Uh, yep, twenty-two yep. damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Should we all just get shields and keep things back <laughs> until Ra just can destroy them all? <laughs> you just huge chunk out of the thing, almost entirely severing its head. It sways sideways, blood spraying across the mud. Nissa. Okay. Um, I'll see if I can finish it off. I'll do a project force. Yep. Um, I, uh, power, yeah, my, my power check is just got to verify what I need to roll. Should be an 11. 11, yes, then I make it. I uh, rolled a 9 plus 4, so... Um, I'm at D3. Three points of damage! Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boing! <laughs> and recoils from the psychokinetic shock as uh, you strike home. It has, does not have much life left within it, but we'll, uh, we'll make an initiative for the final round. Anyway, everyone roll, please. I, I, feel, I feel so... Um, you know, potent after that strike from the half giant. <laughs> I got a three. Uh, a three. Now you know how I felt. <laughs> so was that your final roll? Yeah. Okay. Wow. An eight for initiative. Uh, Ra on an eight. Uh, Portek. 
Uh, four. Four for four tech. Nissa? I rolled a one. You rolled a one? Okay, that'll be... Yep. Matthias? That'll be it, yeah. <laughs> Same again, three. Three again, nice. Constantine? Six. Six. Okay, uh, Nissa, strike at it with the power of your mind. I will! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, okay, I will do another project force. And that's a hit, or at least a hit. It's a, I, I make the 11. You successfully manifest the power. I, I do. I do. What, what you just said. That's what I just said. <laughs> and uh, that's four damage. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, it caves <laughs> half of the thing's head in. It's barely able to keep its awareness uh, intact. Blood pouring out of its crushed uh, cranium. The thing is almost entirely dead. Bengal and Matthias together. Okay. I attack three times. Uh, right. 16 on a dice, three on a dice, and a 12 on a dice. 12 would miss as well. Just one hit, I believe. One hit, yep. Um, and that is seven damage. Okay, at the same time, Bengal Bengal? Yes, I'm going to use my inspiration roll. I have okay. to announce it. That's have to. why I'm saying it. Okay. Is so, it, is it uh, okay. a D6 or the D20? It's the D21. You get to keep that. You what? Don't have to, yeah, you get they, they roll over. Only the D6s have to be used on the day. Well, I wasn't aware of this. I I rescind my comment of using the inspiration roll. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to save that one then. Because I feel like this monster is on its way out. Um, Right. Where am I in relation to it again? You are right by it. It's been pulled right out of the mud. So it's um, quite right. literally completely in front of you. Cool. How big is its mouth? Um, its mouth is about the size of a large angry dog. These things are medium sized. Uh, I ask because can I go in its mouth? <laughs> sure. Like, would I be able to stand in its mouth and stab it from the inside? No. You could reach your upper body inside if you wanted to. Mm, no, it's not as cool. Okay, well, then I'm just gonna. <laughs> Go at it again, I guess, with my singing sticks. Okay. Um, not I'm able to, okay. uh, like, sort of hit it. D do I see any like weak spots on it? On it at any place? Yeah, most or of its head is a, most of its head would be classified as a weak spot now, given that it's been caved in. Fairly yeah, largely right. caved in. Well, I'm just gonna make it jelly then, I guess. <laughs> okay, jellification um, time. Okay, and that is an 18. And then. Yep. So it's 2d4 plus 10? Yes, for Am both, I correct? yes. You need, you okay, need, you so need to is... hit twice, though. So that is a... Oh, right, yeah, sorry. Um, so that is... Oh, 20, not 20, on one of them. 18 on one okay. and not 20 on the other. And then I got... Um, uh, 19 damage? Because I got two fours plus That's not possible. ten. What do you mean? So that, that makes eighteen. Oh, eighteen. There you go. <laughs> 18. I was close. Okay. Uh, somewhere in the flurry of blows um, from Bengal Bengal and the multiple thrusts from Matthias, the thing dies. It's a little difficult to pin down the exact point because when the pair of you stop, it's in several pieces on the mud. And the sound of Cleodis weeping and coughing. He's kind of sitting there, sprawled, as the thing is just severed to pieces in front of him. It kind of looks up into your faces, mm -hmm. seeing all six of you covered in mud and blood and dried sand, all standing around with just fragments of serpent splattered all around you. I bow and say you're welcome. Um um, Portek looks uh, at whether the little little guy needs some uh, tending to. He's not even aware of how badly he's bleeding. He's that, he get... that overawed yeah. and shocked. So I will I will heal him. Uh, as if on autopilot, Stan's going to just go over to the body and start piecing it out. There's like... nothing can be recovered from this one. It's been thoroughly decimated. 
And I would add, he's still doing it regardless. He's still like <laughs> trying to kind of like it's just something to do. <laughs> yeah, you're not right, are you? <laughs> Cleodis just hugs Portek around the middle and weeps, leaving a big solid snot stain on your breastbone as you work the healing magics over him. Oh no, it's okay. It's not like I helped or anything. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. We gave Bengala like a huge head pat. Oh. <laughs> we work well together. I, I, I like this team. This is a good team. Yeah, even though I still have no fucking clue who you are, we make a good team. <laughs> That's Nissa, <laughs> the trader. Yeah, but a trader that can like do stuff with her mind, but is also good at herbs, but also can do bow stuff because she keeps on asking about getting a bow she well, can do stuff with her mind yeah man oh yeah you oh i forgot <laughs> yeah, man I, I, yeah she she's been, like also... throwing psychic punches all the time oh it's can weird. you teach I, I can, me i'm i'm right here can you teach so? me yeah i wasn't yeah, talking to I you i don't know do you want to learn to throw punches with my mind that'd be really cool okay I That's think. better than rah, you know. That's way cooler no, than no, that. No, 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 it's not as cool. Yeah, you're not, far more effective. With what you, <laughs> you do you. Yeah, Cleaving. you do you. Ain't nobody like you. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best at being you. Keep yeah. at it, champ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody can be you quite like you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have that thing in your hands and you're doing the swishy thing. That's that's very effective. The, the, the swishy thing? It just yes. wails around. <laughs> yeah, it's no, trees are falling over. <laughs> I'm gonna go check back on the I, I walk I wander over to the to the young boy and Yeah um, right we'll we'll take the mecha yacht with us to uh to Are bed. you are you okay? How's the microphone now? Um Cause of common. You speak in Dwarvish. Oh. <laughs> Portek. He, he asks ask, whether you're ask, okay. Ask, uh, yeah. she, yes. Uh, she. How about now? She, yes, yeah. she's a, I am, a, thank okay. you. Can, 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 we, can I go home? Yeah, we're going home now. Uh, we have, don't have any water here to, to get, so we need to go home and report back to Kled. Is there any way we can purify this water? Like by boiling it or something? <sighs> Not really, no. no. It would need the magic of a druid to fix this. Yeah, or a water priest, yeah. maybe. We seem to be lacking one of those, so. Or a water priest. Yeah. Okay, let's go, guys. <laughs> so, you bid your farewells. To Cled's oasis. And walk through the canyon. Until it opens up into a great bowl of a valley of stone. There is a town built circular, little round domed huts, dozens of them. There's even a tiny, tiny gladiatorial arena in the center. The village of Cled. But it's not the dwarven settlement that really catches your eyes. It's the ruins, half visible, you can see them on roll 20. Half buried by the sand behind Cled itself. This Portek you know is the lost dwarven kingdom of Kemalok. And the Kled's reason why very, I live here. Yeah. Cled's very existence is to recover this from the desert. At the sound of the children approaching from houses, mothers and fathers emerge. And there is, of course, a tearful reunion.
A group of dwarven elders. Vortek, you recognize Barunus, the village Urnomas, the clan leader. Comes out to see what the commotion is about. And then raises a hand in greeting at seeing you. Strides forward. Portek. You come unlooked for. And he looks at your blood Kate companions. We, we bring bad news. You find it waiting for you. Our druid has been taken by the Jurudai elves. Yes. Without oh. him, Cled will die. And with those words, we roll credits. I don't like Dark Sun anymore. <laughs> <laughs>